Hello! <laughs> I'm finally back with more Star Rail. Since we still have some story to do. And. Let me just check actually if everything works properly. Yes, it should. Good. Of course, I actually had some issues with like. Uh. Yeah, with connecting to Twitch earlier from my OBS. But it also looks like... Mm, yep. Yeah. I checked it another time. It's not necessary for us to stream today. But hey. We want to continue with the story. Um, after we went through like a lot of co-restaurating for a Sunday. Um... I actually got tracked into like another uh, like a movie space with Misha this time and apparently you're gonna like uncover more about Misha I'm actually quite curious what it is so ah okay <laughs> there it is Stream Elements is connected. Good. It just came a bit late, that's why I was like wondering. Uh, wait, let me do the right choice. Wait, support Robin? Yeah, support Robin. <laughs> and we can skip that part. I am now aware. You watched that already. Okay, we're finally back in a child's dream. So let's see what we can actually uncover about Misha here. Mikhail, that's the name. Now we all know him as the watchmaker. So, who is he talking to? Do you know anything about it, Misha? I'm sorry, I don't know much about the Watchmaker, but Mikhail... Anything special about that name? Mikhail is... is Grandpa's name. Ooh, Grandpa. Grandpa? Do you mean you're the Watchmaker's grandson? But we haven't heard anything about the Watchmaker having descendants. And the name Mikhail is not rare. Perhaps it's merely a coincidence. I doubt it. Could I you tell really doubt us it. more about your grandpa, Mikhail? Yeah, sure. He was a seafarer who fearlessly ventured into mysterious seas and storms. He was always on the sea and had lots of friends who accompanied him on his travels. He didn't want me to call him grandpa because that would make him sound old. He believed he was still young. The name Mikhail was given to him by his parents, Mihaly and Elise, both renowned seafarers. Every time he came back, he'd share his logbook with me and tell me about his adventures at sea. I want to become a great adventurer, just like him. It appears that the Switching. seafarer has nothing to do with the watchmaker. So perhaps it's just a coincidence? So, where is your grandpa now? He went off on a new journey. And it's been quite a while since I last saw him. So, where has Clocky gone? Did he leave to protect Dreamville? Maybe. And I promise you, okay, Mikael, so you need to keep yourself safe too. I'm guessing these crows will be some kind of uh, have some kind of relevance. Uh, relevance. Tick tock. Tick tock. I heard some noises from the room. Origami bird? That's a friend of mine. You and 
Origami Bird are friends? Yeah. It's a member of the Compass Crew, uh, just like Clocky and Miss Mirror. And there's more than just one Origami Bird. They are a big family with lots of brothers and sisters who look the same. Oh, it's like the birds we can find all around Panacone. They follow Miss Mirror's orders and handle all sorts of jobs on the ship. They're the best sailors. Sailors? Can origami birds be sailors? Could you tell us more about the compass, Misha? The compass is a ship bound for the new world. Clarky and his partners travel through layers of fog to the depths of the sea. Whenever there is danger, Clocky will use a compass and guide the ship in the right direction. That's a great story. But in the Panacone cartoon, Clocky and his partners have always lived in Dreamville and never ventured out, right? I guess so. Huh? Oh, that does seem to be the case. Weird. I... I clearly remember... Clocky arrived in the new world in the end. <laughs> Perhaps Clocky has a hidden past. I think... I hear the sound of water. You once mentioned there's a magnificent fountain up ahead. Okay, this is an origami bird I made it for. <laughs> Got unreal of there for a second. Oh, uh, sorry about it. It will protect you from harm. What will protect you from harm though? A gummy bird? Uh, protecting dream Just like they did with Kologi. Huh. What did they do with Kologi? Resembles a precious jewel embedded in the dreams of all seafarers. Every time I gaze at the shimmering lights beneath the waves, it feels as though I'm back in this place, standing by your side. Have you recalled anything, Misha? Yeah, I saw these sentences in Grandpa's logbook. He used to say that despite the perils of the sea, Whenever he stood on the deck in the afternoon, overlooking the sparkling waves, he would think of this fountain in front of his house. He often said that those moments felt like returning to his family's side, and the difficulties at sea didn't seem quite as challenging. Uh, you know, I quite understand such sentiments. an elder i was just being a bit sentimental actually she might be we do not know how long she has been stuck in the six-faced eyes <laughs> perhaps every adventurer far from home carries a fountain within their soul even though the other side of the sea remains shrouded in the unknown the fountain in front of his house serves as a compass leading him back to his cherished ones. Yeah, while Grandpa was at home, we would stand by the fountain and place the compass, a toy boat that I made, into the pool. Back then, I would ask him when I could go on adventures like him, and he would always laugh and say I was still too young. Oh, it seems this Mikhail is truly a seafarer and has nothing to do with the Watchmaker. Yeah, based on Misha's recollections, the scenes in the dream bubble appear to be his childhood memories. But this raises more questions. According to Misha, he was clearly born on an oceanic planet and led an ordinary life, with no connection to Panacone at all. 
could this be some sort of metaphor? Perhaps the sea refers to the memory zone. I'm sorry. I don't know, but my memories keep pouring out uncontrollably, like water flowing from a fountain. Perhaps I'll I'll remember more things if we go further. Mm, well, let's see. I wish to share your burden. They actually included the sounds of whales. We're going to the opposite side, right? No, we should turn left here. Okay. Is it something very important? What is? Uh huh. Something feels different about this place. This is it. I remember this corridor. Okay. Up ahead is Grandpa's study. It was in that room that I saw him the last time. Okay, Glocky is here somewhere. Of course, there's this diffium clock. Isn't this from like a proper artwork? Like, whatever, like old and famous one. I'm not sure which it is though. Okay, puzzle pieces. The atmosphere in this room feels totally different. Misha! You finally come! Clocky! Here, here! Huh. Yeah. This is the room where we first met each other. Are those books on the bookshelf log books left behind by that seafarer? Yeah. Whenever he came back, he placed a logbook on the bookshelf in his room. They contain records of his expeditions to every corner of the world. He described our world as a fountain. At some point, the sea started to gradually swallow up the land where people lived. To ensure that everyone had land to settle on. He had to continue exploring the sea and search for the source of the rising seawater. On that day, he called me to his study, telling me that he was embarking on another journey. However, I could sense the gravity in his expression. It... It was the same look I had seen on my father's face before his final voyage. I asked him if I could go with him, but he said that my adventure lay elsewhere and told me to stay home and patiently await a certain sound at the door. What hey. sound? He told me about a vast ocean in the sky, an ocean of stars. He spoke of a train that transports children with a desire to venture far away, traversing the sea of stars without ever stopping. He's talking about the nameless now. He said that he knew the crew on the train, and that he had asked them to take me along. He said the journey I had always dreamed of would start there. A train? Could it be? It's... It's the Astral Express. I... I remember now. Grandpa's friends are a group of nameless who came to this world to resolve a disaster caused by a star. Then, he gave his pocket watch to me. It was his cherished treasure, appearing in every one of his adventure tales. He explained that difficult times were ahead, but assured me that the watch would guide me. He said, 
As long as I kept moving forward, I'd eventually reach my desired destination. And then, it was as if I heard the distant sound of a train whistle echoing throughout the room. Interesting. Exactly, Misha! And then we followed that whistle, didn't we? Yeah. I think I can still find the way we took back then. But... Did you actually ever arrive there? This is the dream jigsaw, right? So we're supposed to find the exit. But where can we find the last piece? Do you remember? You said you obtained a mysterious shard when you stumbled into this place. Hey, the shape seems to match. So this shard is also connected to Misha? Looks like we're just one step from revealing the truth. Let's get to the other side and investigate. When did we ever pick up the uh, jigsaw puzzle piece? Wait, has it been like from like previous versions? Did we pick it up somewhere along the story? Totally forgot about it. But if he was actually supposed to get on the Astro Express, why did he not end up there? At least it doesn't seem like he did. This is it. This is my room of clocks. While I spent my time waiting for Grandpa to return from his voyage, Walter gave me this workshop, and it became my secret base. Here, I learned how to repair clockwork and gears out of my fondness of precision mechanics. In my dreams, I was the captain of the compass, embarking on adventures with my companions, Clocky and Miss Mirror, in search of the new world. I... I was born and raised here. So, this building in the dream bubble is your childhood home yes but not exactly to be more precise this dream bubble itself is my home interesting <laughs> looks like you've remembered everything now wait wait why does it feel like everyone else knows something i don't <laughs> Marge, do you remember when he mentioned a clocky that only he could see? Yeah, the little guy here, right? But we all saw him in Dreamflux Reef, right? And Mr. Yang even greeted him. Looks like everyone on the Astral Express has a childlike spirit. <laughs> the answer lies in the Astral Express. His experience shows that neither Firefly nor Acheron can see this clocky. And when we were in Dreamflux Reef, you may have noticed that for some reason, nobody outside of the crew had ever talked with Clocky. A mimetic life that can only be seen by a select few. It's just like a hidden message left by someone for the nameless. That's us. But Misha <laughs> can see Clocky too, right? They even grew up together. But Misha hasn't started the way of the trailblaze yet. That's the key to the mystery, March. Now take a moment to recall. Have you ever seen anyone outside of the crew interact with Misha? Uh, nope. You haven't. Wait. Uh, uh, no way! That's the answer, March 7th. This dream bubble is the place where I was born. And I... I'm a dweller in this dream. Just like a memory zone meme. I should have stayed here and waited for you. 
when reality and memories merged, I unconsciously pushed open that door and left the bubble with Clocky. So it's not that the Watchmaker's dream bubble is empty, but rather the stuff inside ran away? <laughs> this is also so kind of weird, and the but whistle hey. you heard was the sound of the express arriving at Peniconi? That's one way to see it, but I believe there's a longer story behind all this. It's best for Misha himself to explain all the details. How about we start with your name? Now, should we call you Misha or? Thank you all for helping me rediscover my true self. Now, please allow me to reintroduce myself. I was born on Lushaka in the Presmere system, adopted by seafarers Mikhail and Char. They gave me a treasure, a name that carried their hopes. Mikhail Char Legwork, or simply Misha. If you prefer, okay. you can call me by a more familiar name. The Watchmaker. Hello there. So, you're the Watchmaker himself? Unfortunately, that legendary figure is no more. I am only a reflection of his life. As for the child who has been with you, He's the innocent protagonist of Misha's childhood dream. Friend of Clocky. A young apprentice. And a future mechanic on the Express. Also, welcome to the chat, I'm Neo Dexter. And this Hello there. also marks the beginning of his journey. Devoted to the Trailblaze. Okay, we are going to send it right here. Slack, wait, what is he again? A reflection of his life. So it's just like parts of his memories or like some parts of his subconsciousness stored away, if I understand it correctly. I guess. At the end, end of, of the, the journey, journey, I left, left this, this little life. flame, which, which I so cherished, in, in my deepest, deepest dreams, hoping, hoping to, to pass, pass it on, on to the, the nameless of future, future generations. generations. However, he somehow left the dream bubble and forgot all about his task. I apologize for all the confusion this caused. <laughs> because he was born with a desire to trailblaze, wasn't he? I don't think Misha has forgotten his role as a guide. He remembered it, and that's why he mistakenly appeared as a hotel doorman in his dream from the very beginning. The one who brought our unconscious friend here must have been Misha. If that's the case, we encountered the Watchmaker's legacy from the beginning, didn't we? Yes, well, actually did. I have a sarcastic friend who says I always take big detours and end up back where I started. Perhaps that's what every nameless has to go through. <laughs> kind of accurate, In the though. End, you found me. I'm sure you're all wondering what my legacy is. I believe my hound has mentioned the Stellaron and my wealth. If I may apologize, the Stellaron part is real. As for my wealth, however, it's nothing more than a baseless rumor. I left my homeland as a child and embarked on the journey of Trailblaze. I traveled to various planets until finally reaching Esdana, where my friends and I built the original Peniconi and fought for its future ever since. I've been moving forward all my life, doing what I could to overcome the obstacles in my path. 
But ultimately, my journey reached its end. And I left behind no possessions worth entrusting. So, if you ask what's left within this worn-out train engine that can be called a legacy, I suppose it's the things that are still burning in the engine's furnace. Now that you're well aware of the current situation of Peniconi, I certainly hope that you'll help me get this world back on track. But I'll leave that decision to you, for the path of Trailblaze is never paved by others. All I have for you is a story and two gifts. I want to give you my pocket watch. It has accompanied me throughout my long journey, guiding that naive child forward, and has been blessed with the presence of so many great people up to this day. And my hat, too. The one who navigated for me placed it on my head and planted a fanciful thought in my mind. The trailblazing expedition will never end. Will his head be actually be like the head the we will see it later because I would like the scene like uh, a gameplay trailer for him. Um, the terrible blazer is like getting his uh, like new ability set and there he is like you could say his weapon is a head <laughs> so will it be Misha's head or like the watchmaker's head it would fit and also like I was was wondering why would we fight with a head other than like maybe as a reference to a venturine uh, but yeah now, it's time, time for, for you, you to make your choice. choice. Once you've made up your mind, mind open, open that, that door, door and, and enter, enter the long dream of an old man. man. I'll, I'll be, be waiting, waiting for you at the end of this corridor of time. All right, everyone, let's make a decision. Although I don't think anyone will have any objections. You always choose the trailblaze. Of course! We've come this far. Surely there's no other option than moving forward. In that case, it's unanimous. Then let's proceed together to the end of this dream and tell Mikhail our decision. We won't stop trailblazing now, and we won't for a long time. At least I'm hoping so. <laughs> Mikhail, where are you going? Someone has to step up and save Lushaka. So why can't it be me, Misha? Please don't go, and if you must, please take me with you. Don't leave me alone. Even without me, you know how to proceed forward, brave Captain Misha. The compass is waiting for you. Haven't you always wanted to be a better adventurer than me? Now go, board that train, and start your journey. Where are you going, Mikhail? I... I'm going to clean the floor in the parlor car. I promised the conductor. Wait, first tell me, did you fix this watch? Um, yeah. I know what it looked like before. Its chain was broken, the back case torn, and the marks on the dial all worn out. How did you manage to fix it? Well... Uh, it's hard to explain, but I knew it could be fixed. It's the hands, Mr. Amundsen. Its hands were intact and pointing in the right direction, so I knew there would be a way to fix the rest. Okay. <laughs> I see. You'll work with me from now on. Haven't you always wanted to tinker with this train? 
you're its mechanic now. As for the conductor, I'll do the talking. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is how you get contributed as a mechanic for fucking train. I only know how to fix watches. <laughs> Don't worry, you've got what it takes. I'll teach you what you need to know. Where are you going, legwork? It's time to head to our next stop. Actually, who is the mechanic currently? I mean, Pom Pom uh, always and uh, has always been like the conductor. At least I think so. So. I mean, I guess Kimiko is, and she's like the one who actually like rebuilt the train and like repaired it and fixed it up. So yeah. <sighs> yes, Kimiko. I. I'm staying in Astana with Rosalina and Tiern. I see. This place reminds you of home. The people of Astana have only achieved a tiny victory and still have a long way to go towards true freedom. Hanunu needs us. Don't worry. Not all journeys lead to the stars. Even if I leave the express, our path of trailblaze will continue. <laughs> yeah. I knew you wouldn't stay on the express forever. Leave in peace, my friend. And uh, take this with you. This is Mr. Amundsen's hat. But why? When he departed, he said he would leave it to his best student. Well, I suppose the time has come. Farewell, legwork. Take care of Tiernan and Rosalina. And don't forget to write to us. No, no, the thing uh, about it is an immigration to the navigator. Hmm. I, don't, I don't even think about it, but it's just like a curious question I just have in my mind about like the current roles of like all of the nameless, but I. Where are you going, Watchmaker? Don't worry, Micah. Just going on a little trip. Someone has to be at the forefront of the interstellar frontier, and I'm the only former nameless in Panacone. So why can't it be me? Because you're all we have. Have you forgotten about Tiernan? The cosmos is way more dangerous now. What will happen to Penacone if we lose you too? But what will happen to Penacone if we don't find a way out? Ah, Tiernan. How could I ever forget him? I've spent countless sleepless nights asking myself why I didn't go with him back then. We nameless won't stop. Don't worry, Micah. It's just a matter of getting back to my old profession. Just wait for me to come back. But if, and it's a big if, if I don't come back in one piece, then you'll become the next watchmaker. Where are you going, old man? Oh, you're here. Answer my question. What are you up to? Relax, Gallagher. I just came up with a great idea. Wanna hear it? Oh, come on! Aren't all your ideas just ways to get yourself killed? I may be blunt here, but you're the last remaining hero in Penacone. If you die too, the secret of the Stellaron will go to the grave with you. Well, only partly because Gallagher was also still also part of Stellaron, so... Huh. Yes, I'm afraid there's no way out in Penacone. 
So I'll have to consider alternatives beyond Esdama. We'll organize a festival using the Watchmaker's legacy as a facade and send invitations to the entire cosmos to gather people here. So... a desperate struggle against the family? Desperate? Yes. <laughs> Don't we have you here, my friend? This task is challenging, but what hasn't been challenging for us along the way? Well, whatever you do, remember. Make sure to send an invitation to the Astral Express. And that's what Gallagher called for us. Misha! Huh. Where are you going? Oh, it's you, Clocky. Take me to Dreamflux Reef. Last night, I had a long dream about the day we met. I want to write down that dream. Write it down? Why? Oh, so I won't forget it. Do you remember how you got your name, Clocky? Of course! You told me that when you were a kid, you lived in a room full of clocks. Those wall clocks and pocket watches grew up with you and were your best friends. Yes, but what I didn't mention was there's a funny misunderstanding behind it. I was a kid, and there was always a special pocket watch in my memories. It was with my grandpa, guiding him on his sea voyages and leading the way in his every adventure story. I wanted to have a pocket watch like that too. And that's when you appeared in my dreams. Is this really how Kaloki was created? Every night, we boarded the compass and set sail together. But you know what? It wasn't until the day my grandpa gave it to me that I realized it wasn't a pocket watch at all. It was a compass. <laughs> of course. So, your name should have been Compassy. And the watchmaker is just a nameless. I also was wondering why the pocket watch was like uh, so big if he like actually was a nameless. A compass would have been more like more fitting, but like <laughs> it's silly that this was just like a misunderstanding of the grandson's part, but also funny that it's that's how the, the, that's how like it how it turned it out, and it also actually. Like, Quite helped obfuscating his origins, I guess, and making this mystery bigger. So, I guess here you go. <laughs> it at least made it harder for like other factions to actually figure that it all out. <sighs> We've arrived at Dream Flux Reef. So, where to next? You know, Clocky. I don't think I'll be going anywhere else. Yep, you just returned to where you came from, I guess. I've traveled far enough. It's time for a little break. Oh. So, we'll set out again. When you're rested? <laughs> no.
No, I'll stay here. And then, this is where it ends. This is... where it ends? What do you mean, Misha? You told me that the trailblazing expedition would never end. Yeah, that's what I said. So now, it's up to you to decide your next destination. My next destination? What's that supposed to be? I've been following you! Misha? You're acting weird today. <laughs> if you're feeling down, we can just do what we usually do. <laughs> With the clockwork. <laughs> no, I... I'm not feeling down. As for clockwork... Yeah. It resolves all problems in this dream. So... Do you know what clockwork actually is? Kind of doing how, like... Clocky is kind of uh, suddenly starting to get kind of sad about us. Not quite sure. Well, everyone gets lost at times. They may hesitate and doubt which way to go. That happens in this dreamscape and beyond. But don't worry. Everyone goes through moments of uncertainty and hesitation. Eventually, they gather the courage to make bold decisions. Whether it's calming, Joyful, angry, or, or sad. All they need is a little nudge to take that step toward where they truly belong. I'm leaving that little nudge with you, and I hope you'll share it with others. Such is the essence of clockwork, the will of the trailblaze. <laughs> Clocky's hands spin around non-stop, indicating confusion, frustration, and weakness. But ultimately, people still need to move forward. Just, Just like, like your hands, hands always, always pointing ahead. ahead. This is where my journey ends. From now on, it is your path to walk. <laughs> Trailblazing means taking paths your predecessors forswore, and venturing even further. The Pentaconi and Mikhail's dreams does not belong to order. Wait, is it really the moment we get we get gazed upon by harmony? Interesting. That Eon would cast a glance at Penaconi at a time like this. Is it because of the resonance from the legacy of the Trailblaze? Or perhaps the bond between you is so strong that it even impresses an Eon? I can't lie. I find that, like, order was going to be a part of this actually. Wasn't that surprising if we like paid more attention to what uh, like has been told about a path of uh, like about Shiba before, especially in like some like the universe and such. But I find it interesting how like not like only harmony and order were really quite relevant to Panacone, but also like the trail blaze was like like the path of the trail blaze was like extremely important to Panacone. And not because we are here, because in like uh, the CN show and uh, the space station as well in Belleborg, it wasn't like that relevant, like the the concept of, and the path of trailblazing is itself. But here, we kind of like kind of convert a bit. Also, a bit of uh, anticlimactic moment for uh, the harmony to actually pay attention to us, but hey. 
Well, there might be another possibility. Perhaps they want to witness, on behalf of the Fallen Eons, who will hold the future of Penicone. Interesting theory. Uh, well, also it's true. The head of, like, uh, the Watchmaker will actually like, be the head which we will fight with. It's like the Harmony Trailblazer. If that's the case, on behalf of the Dream Master of Penacony and the 107,336 members of the Oak family, I'm extending a formal invitation to all of you. I'm cordially inviting you all to the Penacony Grand Theater to participate in the upcoming Charmony Festival. And, of course, you won't be in the audience, but on center stage. Since oh. the future of the Stellaron, Penacony, and even the entire cosmos is at stake, let's draw a conclusion there, in all fairness. If you truly believe in Akavili's path, then show me their courage and determination. Oh, that we will, without issue. And without fail. Yep. We actually unlocked the how many trailblazer with that. And this on the Roma. Yeah, we can switch. Um, I don't think I will actually need like preservation tray or laser that much anymore. Sure, let's do the nice. trial. Why not? Uh, increases break effect of all allies. Ah. Uh, causes additional break damage when allies attack enemies that are weak. This problem. Okay. Yep, this is literally. Ha. Ta. Uh, talent. The trade with returns and she when we talk this weakness problem. The start of next break increase all this break effect, okay. Minor imaginary damage Demon to a single enemy with five bounces, okay. Bounces are a bit annoying, but okay. Outflood flood like parade can solve this. The Victor Dance effect is for five minutes. I have to break him. Okay. Yeah, we're not. We need a strategy. Please stay tuned. Please stay tuned. <laughs> okay, it wasn't an attack, but a good. Commencing support. It's time. In the mood for another beating? Time to mix things up. Motor function restored. Dreams do come true. Enemy targets detected. The mood is set just right. Let the show begin. <laughs> okay, I like this animation. Enemy data signet markers activated. Time for a good old counterattack. I also like never used what was the name again? Yeah, she I never used her before. By the order of the ten will execute the Mara Struck! That's what you got? Nice <laughs> like a good my friends. <laughs> Indulge yourselves! Oh, nice. Let's improvise. Ready for another? Do you admit this crime? In the mood for another beating? <laughs> what about dance move? Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I guess I might build him eventually, but I'm not sure if I will do so soon or not. This is just good the next uh deals for increased damage. Just 
Oh, nice. Attacks increased by 10. Oh, that's good. Oh, mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm. Okay, actually, you can enhance this because you can superimpose it. Here you go. I'm sure I don't expect it to like probably build him yet because, uh, because I do hope not, but yeah. Can give him some basic stuff first. Before our paths diverge, savor the shared journey. I might build him soon, but I actually finished the wrench arena today. And next I will definitely go for building Robin. So not sure when I will do him. We just stick with our current party, I guess. Does that mean he wants to fight us during the Charmony Festival? I'm afraid so. This is weird. Aren't Ark villains usually plotting some dirty conspiracy in the end? But he actually said something like, In all fairness. Could it be that he's underestimating us? Well, in my opinion, Sunday is deeply committed to his own philosophy and genuinely wants to prove that the Order is right. I sensed a strong conviction and a desire for dominance in him. Maybe he won't accept the outcome unless he wins fair and square. Hmm. That's why he'll give it his all in the upcoming battle. <laughs> what the fuck is this answer? We've even dealt with a Lord Ravager of the Destruction, so a follower of the Order won't be a big deal. Nope, we won't. Anyway, we can't leave the Stellaron unchecked. This is about trailblazing a bright future for Penacony and fulfilling Mikhail's and his predecessor's long-cherished wishes. Now that we've taken up the mantle, we can't afford to fail them. However, the same applies to the Order. Their plan didn't materialize overnight. And they have the profound collective consciousness of the planet of festivities behind them. A desire to dream. To slumber and escape reality. All those hidden emotions have given birth to the sweet dream of the Order. They've harnessed the will of an entire planet to create an eon. This confrontation is far more complicated than a simple power struggle. To secure Penacony's future, fighting on the stage alone is not enough. What do you mean? Are you not coming with us? I believe Firefly is trying to say that she's heading off to another battle. Mm-hmm. Okay. Before I left, the Destiny Slave told me that this journey would bring unforgettable rewards. Even though the script he gave me only had a few lines, I couldn't ignore them. Because one of the lines said, I'll experience death three times in the land of dreams. Three times? This can't be serious. Right? Wait, three? If my count is correct, you only died, uh, quote unquote, um, one time so far. So. 
so yeah the first time was a painful death when i was stabbed by the blade of dormancy which led to all subsequent events the script will always come true but in a way that will only be revealed when that page is turned so now i've understood the meaning of my second death and i am prepared to face it if all goes well my efforts will provide crucial support for you okay. only by achieving victory in this battle can we secure a future for Peniconi. and only then my third and final death won't come true in the most terrible form. The most terrible form? Does that mean... The true death. Where everyone in Panacone loses themselves completely in the eternal sweet dream of the Order. Hmm. We must do everything we can to prevent that. Have you... Made up your mind, Firefly? Yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Thank you again for your assistance for the Astral Express. May we meet again, in reality. Yeah. Farewell, everyone. May your trailblazing expedition never end. You should recruit her, not gonna lie. I want her recruited. I dreamed of a scorched earth. Everyone, are you ready? A new shoot <laughs> sprouted from the earth. It bloomed in the morning sun and whispered to me. Like fireflies to a flame, my feet are stiff. May we meet, meet again, again in reality. reality. After today, Japella's name will disappear from cosmic history, and the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not too distant future, you'll receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Land of the Dreams. Panacone. I hope you find whatever you seek there, be it answers. More salvation. <laughs> you mean my three deaths? Silverwolf told me about it. It's such a shame that it's not part of my script. <laughs> well, I want to live. Of course, he would say to Blade. I'm never afraid of death. The opposite of death is eternal life, and that's. That's something I'll never desire. People die. And I am no exception. Death is like a script. A fate that cannot be defied. But that's exactly why... We have to choose where we want to rest forever. Do you exist just to perish? I hope You're not. not the same, Blade. The end you desire is not one dictated by others. If I were to die now, I would only be a weapon. I believe I should die as a human. I'm with you there, Firefly. Though its definition escapes me, isn't this the answer that ordinary people look for their whole lives? A name that can be carved onto their tombstone. A tombstone that belongs to me once bore the inscription Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. Then it changed to Stellaron Hunter. But one day, it will 
bear the name Firefly. And all the brilliance she showed at the end of her life. That's quite unexpected, old man. Who would have thought your crazy plan would actually work? <laughs> Do all you nameless fools just act on a whim? I guess they do. I can sense that this false sweet dream is coming to an end. The nameless may be young, but they had the ability to achieve this goal. Just like you did in your time. It's a shame you won't be able to see it firsthand. <laughs> Maybe I won't either. Once something fictional is seen through, it ceases to exist. Yeah, not just those nameless. Even Mr. Wings is just like you. Stubborn, won't listen or give up, no matter what. Well, fate is unpredictable, I guess. If we weren't bound by those cursed paths, maybe we could have had some good talks. But in the end, we managed to do it. And now we can find solace. Remember how those idiots cursed us? They said, go to hell, you worthless traitors. <laughs> well, I don't know if they really meant it, but if longing for freedom means going to hell, then I'll be joining you soon, you fool. Let's get together and have supper again in hell. Okay. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. There's one more thing. Here's to you. A glass of hello and goodbye, trailblazer. To the imperfect tomorrow. Heads up. Heads off to you, Gallagher. And a toast. It's warm here, isn't it? You're lucky to have found shelter from the rain. Let alone fresh berries in this desolate place okay why are you jumping back to like Acheron's backstory now <laughs> I was just following the scent of life it's particularly strong in a place like this it's a shame these berries don't have much flavor seriously in case you didn't know this fruit is pretty juicy the only downside is that when you chew it, it becomes extremely spicy. <clears throat> Have you lost your sense of taste? <clears throat> I can still taste certain things, like a faint sweetness. Before coming here, I stopped by a place called Orkron. It had barren cliffs and nights lit by bonfires. Burgundy snow would fall from the sky, and when it landed on my tongue, it tasted like raspberries. The flavor wasn't exactly sweet, but it left a lasting impression. When I think back on my past, I realize that what's tying everything together isn't the big events, but Rather, these small yet unforgettable moments. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Losing oneself is a reality that every self annihilator must face. At least I haven't completely lost my senses and memories yet. Well, congratulations on adding another footnote to your journey. Okay. <laughs> By the way, are you always alone? No, I had a companion in Orkron. She's a short, nameless girl who aspired to explore IX. She always said she'd walk a path deeper and farther than Akavili's. That's an... Curious, Lord Rob. A nameless girl who aspired to explore IX.
May... Maybe it's like not a coincidence then that like Acheron became like an emanator of IX or like a self annihilator of nihility. If she actually has like a companion who actually like aspire to like get closer to nihility. Who would it character be? Knowing what like Acheron's connection like actually is to like the deeper lore. It's quite curious. <laughs> quite an ambition for such a small girl. So uh, what happened? She became stagnant water. Well, my condolences. Condolences? I don't need them. The girl left with a smile. She never regretted her choice and most definitely won me to say goodbye with a smile. So, that's what I did. That's proof that you're grieving for her. Or perhaps I'm just afraid. Afraid? I rarely sense that emotion from you. What do you fear? I'm afraid I'll forget the 30 days I spent with her, just like all the other days in my life. Most of them have already washed away with the rain, disappearing into an unseen realm. I fear that those vivid red memories will fade away too. There isn't much color left. And besides this faint warm red, there's almost nothing. Mm. Okay. Hard to imagine. A ranger accustomed to bloodshed, destruction, and chaos finding warmth in the red color because i have experienced this warmth many times long ago i promised someone that i'd bring it to more people and that for every remaining moment of my life i'd strive for a better ending for all as long as this red color still lingers i have a chance to fulfill that promise it represents a burning fire, a blooming flower, the berries in this cave, and life itself, fleeting yet still dazzling. In the end, it will lead me beyond the horizon of existence. And on the other side, I will cut off nihility. The one blessed by the sleeping and shapeless is considering how to kill them. That's truly pure nihility. I can't lie, I hope for her to be able to do that. <laughs> I kinda I don't like seeing a Karon in like the dilemma she currently is. Richie is a really cool character, but she's also like Quite a tragic character, not gonna lie. And I don't feel like she deserved it. But you're right about one thing. After spending so much time near this stagnant water, only when I look at this vibrant red fire do I realize that I'm still alive. When will this rain ever stop? Perhaps when the sorrows of the departed have finally quieted down, the sky will clear up.
Have you heard of a planet named Biari Scamandros, Don Hung? It's one of the paradise kingdoms under the influence of the Harmony. A sought-after wonderland for the inhabitants of the Dardanu major and minor systems. Half an amber era ago, the family held an unprecedented festival there. And after that, everyone on the planet became part of the family. Do you think the same thing will happen on Penacony? Yes. Or how else can we explain it? The family deliberately used the Watchmaker's invitation to keep all the Pathstriders here, but banished the Emanator of the Nihility. Because of the Nihility, I'm rarely affected by the power of other Paths, but somehow I can unconsciously infiltrate them. <laughs> Maybe that's the risk they're trying to avoid. Interesting. I would disagree. Biori Scamandros is not part of the credit system or connected to the Silver Rail. It's nothing more than a remote civilization sheltered by the Harmony. But Panacone is different. If the family messes with Panacone, that would be like declaring war on almost half of the factions in the cosmos. They have no reason to do that. No, they don't. If they truly serve the Harmony, that is. Which they don't. What do you mean? The path in Panacone is impure. The Harmony here has impurities. Do you remember the ancient swarm disaster? Tazeroth, the propagation, brought endless havoc to the universe. And it eventually evolved into a fierce battle among all eons. Two paths lost their eons in that war. The Propagation and the Order. Coincidentally, their downfall is related to a certain eon. Shepe, the Harmony. Legend has it that they participated in the crusade against the Imperator Insectorum and devoured Anna the Order for unknown reasons. Holy Forgaroni! So you're saying that the two leaderless paths are working behind the scenes? But I don't see any descendants of the propagation in Panacone. Could it be that the remnants of Beyond the Sky Choir are hiding within the family, trying to resurrect a fallen eon? It's getting propagation for it, I can't know. say for sure, but they're definitely planning something for the Charmony Festival. Whoa. This is getting way too complicated. Is this why you want us to leave Astana right away? Are you giving up? The Charmony Festival will start soon. There's one thing that I need to confirm no matter what. A warp jump is the best way to do so. Mm. Time is running out. I have another plan. Hold on. Are you thinking of using the Jade Abacus of Allying Oath? Exactly. The assistance from the Lawful Cloud Knights would be enough. Think mm. it over carefully. You can only use that once in your lifetime. I have considered it thoroughly. My companions are... They're also once-in-a-lifetime treasures. Interesting. I also was wondering why you saw um why you saw Jing Yuan in the trailer for Panacone because it felt so weird that they would be here, but giving uh giving him his new plan. Yeah, okay, not also surprising. <laughs> Are you the only one here? The Nameless is quite the diplomat. Our secrets have spread like wildfire within the family. And IPC starships are gathering towards Astana. This is a crucial moment for us. So, 
Where is the chosen one who harmonizes the varied sound? What do you mean, Master? I'm right here in front of you, aren't I? You know, she was supposed to be the star of the Charmony Festival in our plan. But not in not the plan has changed. As her brother, I, I know she doesn't want to sing for the Order. So I'll take her place. Hmm. You've always been wise beyond your years. I'm sure you understand the consequences of your choice. If you consider this a betrayal... Well, there can't be two suns in the sky. I'll step up and take down the other sun if necessary. Do you believe in karma? <laughs> If karma exists, then everyone has their own karma. You have yours, and I have mine. And my karma has nothing to do with you, Mr. Gopherwood. <laughs> All right. Since you're willing to sacrifice yourself for her, I'll grant your wish. Well, the compromise came sooner than expected. Why? You and your sister were born as twins of the Order. And one of you is destined to follow this path to the end. Is this part of your plan? Of course. You're still as clever as you were when you were a child. The opening is near. Go, my child. Seize the power of the harmony and reveal your karma. I have one final question, Master. Why did you choose to bring the Order to Penacony? Wouldn't it have been better to choose a desperate world, instead of a city filled with hope and dreams? Why? It's for justice, my child. If we lose justice in our hearts, we'll make the same mistake as the Harmony did. So, it's not you who manipulates the dreamscape with the Stellaron. But... Well, that's where our conversation ends. Go ahead. The 107,336 souls of the Oak family have dreamed of this moment too many times. Hmm. But they're just saying really that there's someone else behind this as well. I shall ascend to the heavens, becoming the scorching sun. Bathed in my light, my people shall flourish, while all evil shall be eradicated. Oh, we won't let you. This is the interior of the Penacony Grand Theater. Oh, it's quite exhilarating to be flushed into the air by Soul Glad. But <laughs> why is the venue still closed when the Charmony Festival is about to start? And not only that, the entire theater is eerily quiet. No audience, no staff, no one around. It's only weird. Yeah. I wonder how many tickets. Hey, that's not what we should be concerned about. <laughs> Let's I like that answer. Explore around. 
Be careful, everyone. What am I gonna say? There's a sticker. Okay. Huh. And a treasure chest right behind us. This isn't. Why is this so big? And why is this? I guess this will unlock later. I heard it. Gosh, the atmosphere here is so creepy and unsettling. Even if there's no audience yet, there should be some staff around. Why is it so silent? Good question. It's really kind of eerie like this, not gonna lie. Wait, why are they lying on the floor? Even in like a praying pose. Um, where was the bird I heard? Ah, there it is. In the bamboo. At least it looks like it's bamboo, or not. Well, it's actually like, um, more like the thing of like an organ looking like a bamboo wall. Like those are like organ pipes, I think. Oh, it's weird that it's so like silent, like no music and anything like that. I kind of figure this one out, what the hell? stupid right now. Hmm. 
Ja, ich denke, das war... Ja. So long to figure out. There you go. This was a hard one. I would like say like the proper first of these kind which was like quite hard. Puppets, part of the stage setup? Even so, it's so eerie that the entire front hall is empty. I feel like, are these already like people who have been like assimilated by the tree master? <sighs> like, the ones who like were, are part of the like the old family? And already part of his hive mind. Something feels off. We're in the right place, right? There's no other grand theater in the dreamscape. So Sunday's messing with us? He said we'd have a final showdown on the stage, but why is there no one here? My apologies for the delay, March 7th. You scared me! Where are you now? I'm waiting for you behind the curtain. Following the Asdana tradition, I invite you to enjoy a stage play in three acts before the festival begins. Wife Bray, it's... History is a mirror reflecting the universe's true essence. Let's use this opportunity to delve into the rich history of Penacony and the eons. Within it, naturally, the future takes shape. Let us commence with the dawning of the world. History lesson. After the dusk wars, darkness veiled the sky and chaos consumed the earth. Anna, the order emerged Destined to restore all existence. That marked the first day. Ooh. Zero looks they cool. They gathered nebulae guy. and forged them into picks, thus creating a grand lyre with black and white keys. Strike the white keys, and the sun rose. Strike the black keys, and the moon rose. And so, the cycle of day and night arose. That marked the second day. Okay. Huh. I will focus on the story. We will do exploring later. The puppets are gathering around the frame. Are they expecting us to enter it? Ooh. 
Hold it to prison now. Where are we now? The atmosphere here looks similar to Sunday's inner world. Perhaps this so-called stage play is created with his abilities. This act is named Ode to Prisoner. Given the atmosphere here, I believe it's about Pentagoni's past. I thought things were finally looking up as I managed to dodge prison during my recent trailblazing expeditions. But now it looks like I'll be back behind bars again. <laughs> I genuinely wish to avoid a violent clash with my esteemed guests from afar. Therefore, I've arranged three acts before the situation becomes irreparable. Where shall we start our narrative? Well... <laughs> Cut him off of the bird. Where shall we start our narrative? Well... Let's start with the time when Penicone was still a frontier prison. You can continue with it. Turn out your pockets. Some music. Come feast your eyes. It's never too early. Shall we start Mother our narrative? Well, let's start oh, with the time Penicone was still a frontier prison. Uh, what do you do? You guys need to do some with kind of scatter bubbles. And Cannot. Okay. Let's see. In 2147 AE, a prisoner named Hanun ignited a struggle for liberty and emerged triumphant. IPC referred to it as the War of the Frontier, while the Asdanians dubbed it the War of Independence. I'm guessing they're both of the same block? It's true that Hanunu was a legendary hero, but it must be acknowledged that while he bestowed freedom upon the prisoners, he didn't grant them true liberation. There's a chest down there. Give me the tutorial again right now. I don't think I've like pressed anything that should have given me the tutorial already again, but hey. Thank you for staying here, honorable travelers. 
the three nameless stayed on the planet, endeavoring to spread the tenets of Trailblaze throughout the frontier prison. Alas, their efforts proved futile. I can't use this, so... Anyway, they could have used it. Or, like, was the block in the way of me using it? Ah, okay. Let's build another prison. Not Once again, as Donna was engulfed in war, as as this time the enemies originating from within. The prisoners remained prisoners for the rest of their lives, fighting for freedom rather than living for it. I know it was not in the way. It just was stupid. <laughs> I'll just ignore most of the like random dirge mobs. I don't wanna like waste too much fi time on fighting them. Yeah. I hope you like this land of freedom on a scorched earth. As you can see. Their sentences have long ended, and the IPC guards have long been expelled. Yet, these prisoners remain enslaved, not by external forces, but by the confines of their own minds. Freedom permeates every corner, except fragile souls. It gives solace only to those who believe in its existence. Prisoners, this is my order. Learn the essence of freedom and teach your fellow prisoners to fight for their lives. Hey, why do we have to fight while enjoying the show? For I desire not only your enjoyment, but also your assistance in its completion. It's actually sound like the you IPC the has like enemy. provoking them. Ha! Eternal slip. The dead return. Destiny is an ill tidings manifest. Disgusting for oblivion. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Let's settle this. <laughs> uh, another journey from still waters of oblivion. Memories of beneath the waters lies an endless abyss. Forget your wallet. <laughs> happy, happy New Year! Bloom. There we go. Repay. I'll see you off. Ha! Turn out your pockets! What do you want to know? <laughs> Destined for oblivion. Hello. No one can restrain you anymore. You are free. Thus concludes the first act. Amidst a raging war. The frontier prison headed toward becoming Land of the Exiles. This must be how Panacone was constructed. With the aid of outsiders, the prisoners were finally liberated and established the Land of the Exiles. However, it appears that Sunday aims to convey the spiritual plight of the prisoners more than the physical aspects of imprisonment. Uh, this show is a bit too literary for my taste. <laughs> but the battle part is quite easy to understand. Anyway, <laughs> we've arrived at the exit. Let's go! Oh, of course, Marge. These puppets are 
Misfits. Where are they guiding us this time? The second egg, I would guess. They transmuted streams of stars into inked nibs, creating symbols to be pronounced and counted. They molded stardust into flowing rivers, assigning the righteous upstream and the unjust downstream. Thus, all things were marked, and the world learned to discern between good and evil. That marked the third and fourth days. Okay. I guess I'll see, you know, uh, why this quarter is so big now. What do you do, like, a big um, exploration roundup? Um, soon because I also haven't like explored the whole of like oh, look, uh, film frame. studio uh, area <laughs> it would actually be a event surrounding that so I think we'll do this around the same time then and you like play around with that event Ode to Fool. Okay. Ode to Fool. This must be the second act. The surroundings are different from before. The stage decorations look a bit tidier now. I guess. What's the see bird there? <laughs> Behold the ensuing tale. A struggle for power. Panacone witnessed the ascent of the seven major lineages. Tree. Just want to say, how am I supposed to reach that? I was interrupted Sunday again. Oh, this time he's not repeating the voice line, though. Oh, come on, game. Um. <laughs> Four. How much is to it like this? My child, you did not serve the, the leader of the Alfalfa family sought to defect to the IPC, trading freedom for survival. However, his eldest son slew him in the name of righteousness and ascended as the new family head. Right, I guess I will have to pick up pieces first. Oh no, I can just do it. Uh, That's enough. Welcome to this mansion. Dear. Land of the Exiles was in disarray, besieged by both internal and external perils. Though the seven major lineages... Okay, I shouldn't cut off uh, Sunday so often again. It's kind of been annoying though that like the birds cut him off. And he does not tr like try to repeat it again. Yeah. That's why the area is there. We are the, pillars of this the Black Plum family was the first to fall. They withered away in the White Desert event, orchestrated by the Alfalfa family. Because Master shaped you from clay, but forged me. I want to spin it. Thanks. Uh...
No, he's making me like go back and forth in this area. Come on. Gopher Wood led the family to land of the exiles and earned recognition from all five major lineages. Did Panacone earn its new name? The Land of the Dreams. Okay. Dear outsider, I beseech your aid in purging this mansion of the poison spread by the lurking instigator. To help you? What do you need? <laughs> I wish they could regain their reason and cast away the shackles of hypocrisy. This is the second act. Looks like it's about Penacone's journey to becoming the land of the dreams, during which the family plays a crucial role. Don't you think? Perhaps this is the truth Sunday is trying to express, if you read between the lines. The Harmony changed Penacone just as the guards once did. I guess it did, yeah. Looks like we've gotta help those guys kneeling down over there calm down a bit, right? It was gonna be the play, okay. <laughs> In the absence of my master, I am free. <sighs> but without their guidance, for whom shall I sing? The decaying human heart finds rebirth within the calmness, proclaiming the new master. Huh. Uh... I shall sing for my new master. Just as their noble voice once resonated throughout the cosmos. You do that. Master! Oh, you would return in due course. And I shall stand vigilant, awaiting the reward for my loyalty. Only reason. Or well, calmness. Can she have people from the lingering poison of the past? Proclaimed the new master. Master, now that you have gone, I shall wait no longer for my reward. I shall seize what is rightfully mine. Once. I stood as the most loyal guard among all the servants. Now, with my master banished, it's my right to assume control of his dominion. In the absence of calmness, there exists no path to liberation from the clutches of death, proclaimed the new master. Do you just have to make all of them calm? My former master has long departed, but why do I still fear the remnants of his creation? Master is no longer here. I thought I'd be free, but I'm not. Now, without my master's command, I'll have to seek guidance from the blind. Only the calmed ones can evade the insidious influence of the hidden instigator, proclaimed the new master. Master is no longer here. I must seek a new master and serve them faithfully. You people could all just like think for yourselves, but hey. Either I shall be my own master. Or I shall return to my former master. I shall not submit to a new master under any circumstances. 
I wish they could regain their reason, slash calm down, and cast away the shackles of hypocrisy, claimed the new master. Without a master, who can grant me true freedom? You yourself. Thank you, dear outsiders. My servants have regained their sanity. Heed me, one and all. Your former master shall not return. It is through righteousness and unwavering support for one another that we shall attain true perfection. Cast aside the veils of hypocrisy and embrace one another. Also, why does he look weirdly kind of like a persona out of like a persona game? It could just... Uh, the model just really looks like it could be just like persona. <laughs> Get ready. Looks like another fight is about to begin. Okay. Give me a lot of dots. I don't like divinity. It. Here we go. Repay. You chose the wrong enemy. <laughs> Ill tidings manifest. Destined for oblivion. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Slaves till the very end with the illusion of freedom. Thus concludes the second act. Amidst an illusory harmony, Land of the Exiles charted its course toward becoming the planet of festivities. This is how Peniconi fell under the family's control. Since the arrival of the Harmony, the Land of the Exiles has undergone dramatic changes. Not all of which have proven beneficial. Mm -hmm. This guy really loves dramatic scenes. Bet he comes from a whole lineage of stage performers. <laughs> I guess. I mean, it has been like um, a tradition on Peniconi. Don't so. forget to let your friends in on the action. Is that so surprising? So where's Act 3? They used the planetary rings to establish the law, forging a code of conduct among the masses. A grand lyre with black and white keys served as an instrument, while symbols of articulation and numerical notation took the form of musical notes. The downward flowing river became a melody, and the canon of law dictated the form. Thus, all mortals found their unique place within this symphony. That marked the fifth and sixth days. Ok. 
Okay. Stream forth. Is it the yeah, you can also one shot formidable foes with this? Or like so called formidable foes? on the selling points. This guy is really into these puppets. I guess. Yeah. Oof. Definitely looks like it. Oh, to order. Yeah, okay, fitting. Oh, I get it now. The last scene is all about singing the praises of the order. And the atmosphere here is completely different from the previous two scenes. This is the concluding act of this play. I have showcased the past and present of Penacony, hoping that my desire for change resonates within you. And now, I shall reveal its future to you. For the people. His soul desired the future. We will make choices on their behalf and bear the responsibility. Uh, this already looks like a more complex room. Stream four. Okay, just need to back to like around for a puzzle. All right. Easy again. Let me check this first. That's on there. I think I can reset this then. Shall govern the movement of stars. Before the, the everything followed 
its next stream for and so it shall continue even after the king's departure but <laughs> after the king's departure we no longer have the king. king for we have become kings of all things Hmm. This is where it came from. I can just run towards Google because I think there's nothing else for this room here. Yep. Hey, aren't we supposed to kick off a short story and have a fight here just like we did in the previous acts? Why aren't any of these puppets saying anything? Perhaps we'll need to complete the story ourselves, just like we did before. So, do you think their mind needs tinkering or something? Mm, how do you tinker with them this time around, though? Based on the experience from Act 2, it seems we will need to employ the croquet once again to personally begin the performance to fruition. Uh Farewell, former king. We no longer have need for a king, for we have become kings of all things. Farewell, former king. Interesting. How did it go? You can't change them? What does that mean? My apologies for my negligence. I forgot to inform you that the final part was scripted long ago. Let our previous king recount it to you. Now it is time for the final fight. Prepare for battle. Looks like we'll have to fight again. Not surprising. Thank you for charging mode, isn't it? Another journey begins on the still waters of oblivion. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Receive divinity. Destiny's hand Repent. has truly blessed me. Hmm. What do you want to know? <laughs> Y'all don't really see what's wrong. Or was it fate? Destined for oblivion. Don't throw the game! I'll see you off. <laughs> Forget your wallet? On the still waters of oblivion. Turn out your pockets! Kipprah! Destiny's hand <laughs> has truly blessed me. I like it how it does really nothing for me. You can't, the enemy can't just like loop like swarm because Roger will just have a break. Uh, another journey be destined for oblivion. I weep for the departed. What do we just cut it to pieces? Anyway? It too shall fall. In the hush that 
expanse of a nocturnal reverie, I leave faint traces behind. No need to remember me, or to recall the essence of dreams. What is mine shall wane, while you shall transcend its delicate nature. This is the final scene. It's much more straightforward. He wants to expel the harmony and establish an empire based on the order. Let's go. Once this stage play concludes, it'll be time for the main event, the Charmony Festival. But this will just be the same thing, just even more extreme. First they got ruled by the IPC, worked as so-called slaves to the IPC. Then they were slaves of the Harmony and now they're becoming slaves of the Order, which seems even more extreme than the Harmony was before. This is looks like it. They imbued the world with meaning, perfecting all things in the heavens and on earth. Then they rested from the labors of creation. Yet all beings cried out to Enna. Under the banner of the Order, you have defined all things in the cosmos. But this made us realize that we are but puppets in your hands. Thus, on that day, all beings united and cast the Eon into the abyss of oblivion. This grand theater looks totally different. Is this the power of the Order? Everyone, get ready. This could be a tough battle. Oh, I'm ready. I have to go around. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that marked the seventh day. Sunday. Cheers and chants reverberate the in the Why would they yell the order is dead? Look, there he is! That concludes everything related to the order. What are your reflections on this, my dear guests? Nevertheless, this is but a trivial blip in the annals of galactic history. What truly matters is the course this river shall take in the days to come. You've arrived at the perfect moment. The Charmony Festival is about to commence, and it would be a shame if you were absent for the Harmony's prologue. Allow me to extend my warmest welcome once more. Welcome to Penacony Theater, the very core of the sweet dream the abode of the Stellaron, the grand stage of the Charmony Festival, and the very place where the future of Penacony shall be determined through conflict. That's Your only unwavering a faith in the Trailblaze is truly impressive. True goodness can only be achieved through faith. Allow me to point out that falling into a permanent slumber is not happiness. Especially when those people are driven by someone else's will in their sleep. Do you still believe that the Order only seeks to control the universe as their puppet, Himeko? No matter how perfect your vision of paradise may be, a cage remains a cage. 
achieve true happiness in a world like that? They would just be toys for the Eon! <sighs> it seems you have misunderstood my intentions. Allow me to clarify. My desire is not to resurrect a fallen Eon, or become one myself. My sole objective is to create a paradise free from eons, where the Order ensures the dignity and happiness of all humanity. A paradise exclusive to us human beings. That's not the case. If people are to live with dignity, there must be nothing and no one above them. Mm -hmm. In your so-called paradise, you would be the one reigning supreme. <laughs> Looks like we won't be able to convince each other. Now that our conflict has been destined, let's unveil our paths and reveal to the universe the true path. However, before the prelude to the future begins, please take a moment to ponder the questions I've posed. Is darkness equal to daylight? Are sinners equal to the righteous? <laughs> If you are born weak, which god should you turn to for solace? Where just were you fighting these? <laughs> Effector has actually kicked in. Destiny isn't true. Ill tidings manifest. Beneath the waters lies an endless abyss. Another journey begins. Still waters of a. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. You chose the wrong enemy. <laughs> what do you want to know? Uh? Free will or was destined for oblivion? Forget your wallet? <laughs> I'll see you off. Sorry, man. Happy New Year! Destiny isn't chosen. <laughs> Another journey begins. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Bye bye. Oh. It's actually. Okay. You chose the water. <laughs> What do you want to know? Ill tidings manifest. Free will. Huh. I'm I'm serious, huh? Uh, Eternal uh, oh. the dead return. I was a bit slow on that. Uh, come on. Beneath the waters lies an endless abyss. Receive divinity. Don't worry, it's just a scream. Bloom. Destiny's hand has truly blessed me. Uh? <sighs> Destined for oblivion.
come on. I need him for heals. Eternal sleep. The dead return. Destiny is apparent. <laughs> On still waters of oblivion. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Let's settle this. Mm. Receive divinity. Don't worry. It's just a scream. It says for the Destined for oblivion. I already know <laughs> your decision. I now permit you to gaze into the sun. On these 107,336 stones, the almighty and powerful strings of harmony are at my disposal! The supreme tuner! Harmonious choir! Dominicus! Hello there! Lost souls, come and meet your master! The embodiment of the harmony? So, the true purpose of the Charmony Festival is to yeah, usurp it? Yeah, so gain a collective shield. Okay. Memories are ever-changing. Beneath the waters lies an endless abyss! <laughs> Another journey begins. On the still waters of oblivion. Uh? <laughs> I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Why is it perceptive as you are? Answer me this. Why does the harmony and the order merge into one? I'm feeling like there's another world in front of my eyes. It's the power of tuning. Don't let the song distract you. I'll see you off. Okay. Noisy. Again. Destined for oblivion. What do you want to know? <laughs> Turn out your pockets. Happy <laughs> your eye. Happy New Year. <laughs> Let's settle this. <laughs> the dead return. I'm gonna broke them again. <laughs> Another journey begins on the still waters of oblivion. It was easy. The time has come. Creation will be reborn from the remains of the gods. <laughs> Radiant spirits, hear my word. Show no mercy. This is cool. <laughs> kind of like the soul fighting to uh, those two fighting together. What the fuck? Oh, are you all right? Can you hear me? Do you remember your name? Uh, it does? Well, doesn't ring any bells to me. 
This is, I think, literally the first thing you said to us at the start of the game. Or at least one of like the first uh, sentences. Looks like your mind's still in one piece. If you're able to remember such details, well, that's reassuring. Uh, it's a long story. Uh, simply put, Don Hum used the Jade Abacus of Allying Oath when we were in the middle of a fierce battle and summoned the General to help us just in time. And then we returned to reality. Look, this is your room. Everyone else has also returned from the dreamscape. Himeko and the rest are at the lobby discussing matters with the General. And now that you're awake, we should tell the crew that you're all right. Come with me. Okay. <laughs> Not going to come chat with me, sleepyhead. Shit, HP. Ah. That voice. Is that Black Swan? Ah. Black Swan is also talking to us. Hey, Hello. where are you going? Hey. We meet again, sleepyhead. What? What's Miss Black Swan doing here? Nothing, Miss March. I noticed he was awake and wanted to check to see how he was doing. Though the strike from the general was timely, its destruction was also immense. When emanators collide, ordinary people inevitably suffer. But luckily for them, the dreamscape is my home turf. Thankfully, I managed to get everyone out before the harmonious choir collapsed. Thanks for rescue then. Oh, so that's what happened. Uh, thank you, Miss Black Swan. Don't mention it. After all, I wouldn't want to see such precious memories vanish. You're heading to see your friends, aren't you? Would it bother you if I walked with you for a short while? Nope. Of course not. But you're not planning on doing something like last time, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you think that? I've never harbored any ill intentions. Well, not when you are around, anyway. Well. Wow. <laughs> Himeko and Mr. Yang are probably still busy. Let's go look for Don Hung first. Hmm, these are like still locked, right? Hmm. Look, ah. he's still talking to that cowboy. You're awake. How do you feel? Well, fork me. You must be that Stellaron they were talking about. Except Allow me to morning. introduce him to you. <laughs> this is Boothill, a galaxy ranger. During our pursuit of a certain person, we crossed paths and just so happened to uncover a shocking plot being concocted by Mr. Sunday. <sighs> Which is why we sought you out, to help the Astral Express save the world together. No need for thanks. The Galaxy Ranger's principle is correct every injustice one sees. That's how you lot in the Sienjo put it, right, Don Hoon? Uh, more or less. <laughs> Wait, hold on a sec. This is the first time I'm hearing about this certain person. Who are you chasing? And why would that lead you to the Express? What, Ekaron? <laughs> Uh, good question. <laughs> it's, uh... <clears throat> Who was it again? Uh, Don Hum, do you remember? Wait, what? <laughs> Is he playing that? Or did someone actually mess with his memories? No, that ain't it. I just can't seem to recall. 
Weird. My neurochip hasn't registered any malfunctions. It, I'm guessing this is Black Swan's doing. I can't seem to remember either. Uh, what's going on? <sighs> Vic, forget about it. If it slipped all our minds, reckon that person was just a minor scoundrel. Unimportant. Ain't gonna stop us from piecing together the story anyhow. Yes. When the dust settles, I'll just think of a way to recall it in the memory zone. <laughs> Everyone, let's hurry up and look for Miss Himiko, shall we? He's now a minor star on Panacone, and the entire hotel's concerned about his well-being. You're right. Let's head to the lobby then. Okay. Look, they're with the. <laughs> That's all right. In these times of conflict, for the sake of utmost safety, it is only right that the Alliance steps forward to mediate on behalf of the Astral Express. We must not allow you to take unnecessary risks. Furthermore, despite the IPC's eagerness for success, it prioritizes peace above all. And the family, trapped though it may be, professes a desire for harmony. The Alliance has always won people over with reason. I firmly believe both parties can indeed put aside their differences and come to a peaceful agreement. What I'm just thinking about, though... Topaz never came into play. Or, like... The IPC members who arrived, like, right after Adventuring was, like, gone. They never came into play so far. The General possesses a deep understanding of the greater good. With the Sienjo Alliance mediating, Peace for Panacone is within reach. You flatter me. But ultimately, it's been all down to the Express. Without your efforts, this sweet dream paradise would have been claimed by the last remnants of order before there was even a shot at peace. Well, would you look at that? Here comes the big hero. Since the one who did the finishing blow. <laughs> Here's the galactic baseballer, the paragon of both heroism and humility. Thank you. Are you okay? <laughs> I heard you couldn't wake up. Are you feeling unwell? Uh, don't worry, Mr. Yang. There is nothing wrong with him. He practically burned through a lifetime's worth of jokes on the way here. What about you, Mr. Yang? I heard that even Miss Robin wasn't spared. And that guy locked you both up. Uh, it's a long story. But at least Mr. Sunday took it easy on us. He used an ability called tuning to connect our consciousnesses with his. In other words, he imprisoned us within his consciousness. Thanks to General Jing Yuan's destruction of the Harmonious Choir, we were able to escape. Sweet. Uh, he used that tuning on us, too. Does that mean that we were almost imprisoned as well? I can confidently say now, he was truly after a fair fight with us. Had he wanted, he could have easily taken us down without so much as lifting a finger. Speaking of the Oak family head, where is he now? <laughs> it's complicated, but in a nutshell... He's now the former Oak family head. Okay. The IPC has named him the key figure in the family's Panacone split, citing a threat to cosmic peace. He must represent the family and answer for the unrest caused. His trial is set to take place at Pier Point. The family quickly labeled him and the remnants of the Order as enemies, declaring the turmoil an internal rebellion. 
This move effectively barred the IPC from intervening in family affairs on both moral and rational grounds. Everyone really has their own agenda, after all. Then, what's going to happen to Miss Robin? She and Sunday won't be able to deny their involvement in the Charmony Festival. They're siblings, after all. <sighs> Why the sigh, General? I can only say that this incident is an unexpected mess for the girl. The Alliance will try to persuade the family to consider this matter carefully during mediation. It's time, everyone. The IPC's key members and I have agreed to consult one another before the upcoming negotiation. Do any of you wish to sit in? Given the General's invitation and the matter's significance to the universe, the crew will naturally accept. However, if the IPC has any reservations... Why, of course you're welcome. They've mentioned that your team is a trusted ally of the IPC in Pentacony, so there's no reason not to welcome you. Besides, if there can be reliable observers from the Astral Express present, discussions will go more smoothly. So, what do you all think? Let's go. <laughs> well then, we shall oblige. I'm kind of allergic to those types of situations. I think I'll just head back to my room and start packing. <laughs> Not to worry. Himiko and I won't take care of things. I'm afraid I'll also have to return to the Express first. The conductor is worried about us. It's best I go and explain the situation. Thank you. What about you, hmm? Will you join Welt and me? Or have you got other plans? I want to go with time. <laughs> Great. Although I'm not too sure of the reason, the representatives from the IPC have insisted on his presence. Allow me to lead the way. Follow me, please. The negotiation will commence at the hotel lobby. Everyone, please follow me. Hmm. For that, I would just have liked to go down. I can just teleport here. It's faster. Mr. Aventurine and Miss Topaz are here too. Oh, and who is that over there? The Intelligentsia Guild's Dr. Ratio. This assembly is quite something. How's Aventurine back? Huh? It's been a while, my Astral Express friends. I would also extend my sincere thanks to you, General of the Lafu. The presence of everyone here assures that the talks will likely reach a conclusion that satisfies all sides. Oh, looks like everyone has come with expectations. Care to share? Of course. Topaz, if you please. Sure, leave it to me. In summary, that's good news. After much deliberation from the Strategic Investment Department's Council, the absolute majority of members have agreed to the following resolutions. In light of long-term considerations for interastral peace, and by authority of Pierpoint HQ, the Strategic Investment Department, on behalf of the Interastral Peace Corporation, will permanently relinquish its claim on Pentaconi sovereignty and offer unconditional support of the family's rebuilding efforts on Pentaconi. Ah. Uh. <laughs> now that's something. Mm, what's in it for To be you? honest, it does nothing to benefit the IPC. But it is extremely beneficial to the long-term development of the entire universe. Has the IPC finished sharing all its thoughts? Then it's our turn. The Guild, much like the Genius Society, has taken a keen interest in the recent calamity in Pentaconi. Ultimately, both parties have agreed to a comprehensive collaboration, offering technical support for the reconstruction of Pentaconi. 
The floor is yours for the finer points, Mr. Scrullum. Enlighten us, please. <laughs> Scrullum is here too, of course. <laughs> Organic life's unrelenting search to understand the realm of inner spirituality is something I both admire and envy. Inorganic life has no mechanism to evoke dreams. But when my mechanical impulses are activated, my inspiration circuits will start to operate, and I will enter a state defined as imagination. Uh, okay. Every time, within the realm of imagination, there emerges a fire from the shadows. It is warm, bright. I frequently ponder this flame might represent the essence of intelligence. A cluster of inspiration ignited by high temperatures. The future direction of the universe may well lie within it. Alas, they are nothing but projections of my thought system to me. Desired, but unattainable. But after learning of Penacony's accomplishments, I have come to realize that the flame is not beyond my grasp. After deliberations with my partners, we have decided to defer the progress of the Simulated Universe project, and instead assist the Intelligentsia Guild as technological consultants in the research of the Dreamscape and Memory Zone, so that these assets may be better used to serve humanity. Not only that, we've also established contact with the Garden of Recollection through the IPC, and they've pledged their support for our research endeavors. I'm truly happy for the Dream Chasers on Penacony. The cosmos is brightest and, let's admit, dimmer intellects are now at their service. A big W for everyone. At least I hope so. But... Uh, never mind. At the end of the day, this is a positive outcome. No wonder everyone insisted that he be there. It heartens me to learn that everyone is willing to put aside their differences for Penacony's plight. I trust that everyone will surely reach consensus in the upcoming negotiations. Looks like Penacony's future is decided. I'm wondering, is there anything else the crew is concerned about? Peace is our greatest wish. Beyond that, we desire nothing else. <laughs> well, that's good. Now that everyone's minds are at ease, I shall take my leave. You may now depart with peace of mind. The Alliance will deal with all subsequent procedures. If that's the case, it appears that we have nothing else to worry about on Penacony. Looks like it's time for us to embark on a new voyage. Sounds good to me. I think this would be quite you a while until I actually have some. first. I'll pick up March and deal with the checkout procedure. Oh, also, Miss Black Swan, you have a matter to discuss with me, yes? Mm -hmm. Nothing escapes your attention, Miss Navigator. You've been with us this whole time, huh? In any case, he and I will be waiting for you and March on the Express. Let's go. Our time on Penacony has come to a fruitful end. Penacony's journey ends here. <laughs> I guess it was pretty fruitful. This is all due to your heroic deeds in Penacony. Everyone's been moved by your integrity and selflessness. Yeah. Before I forget, because I probably forgot a lot of times, Welcome give me your ID and coins. Uh, or tokens. Thanks. Well, let's finish up the story part, I guess. The navigation meeting is about to start. We're all waiting for you. When did? Ahem. Looks like everyone's present. Let the navigation meeting commence then. This a meeting to decide our next stop? <laughs> How we doing this? By show of hands. 
Hold your horses, cowboy. It's for those to decide. Mm, wait, don't say what you want to join us. Allow me to explain. Mr. Boothill and Miss Black Swan submitted a request to temporarily travel with the Express for their own personal reasons. As you all may know, the Astral Express never declines any passenger whose heart yearns for the distant stars. Therefore, they will be traveling with us for a while until they reach their destinations. Whoa, the Express is going to be much livelier now. But, Miss Black Swan, you better not use your memo keeper abilities to pull any pranks. <laughs> <laughs> Understood, Miss Marge. I promise you, you'll never see me in your room while you're taking a break. Uh, don't! You're freaking me out! <laughs> all right, all right, now that everyone's met everyone, we can continue our navigation meeting. Firstly, Pom-Pom wishes to thank everyone. If it weren't for you all unearthing the truth about Pettaconi, Pom-Pom would have never known where Mikhail and the rest had gone. What they Yay. had to go through was regrettable, but I reckon they all fulfilled their wishes. And it was thanks to all of you. Thank you, everyone. Now then, we come to the crux of this navigation meeting. We must decide on the Express's next stop. Let me introduce our current options. The first choice is from Himiko, the oceanic planet of Lushaka, a planet composed entirely of water. As we mentioned Many a few times. Many races reside there. Of course, it's also the home planet of the venerable, nameless Mikhail. Mm -hmm. The second choice is the agate world Melustanin, suggested by Wilt. It's famed as one of the initial sites of the Stellaron disaster and the place where the beauty Idrilla ascended. Today, it's celebrated as a planet of undying allure. The third choice is Edo Star. A planet nestled within a vast ion storm region, currently under assault by the Antimatter Legion. However, the distress signals from there have recently ceased, prompting the IPC's wish for us to check in on the situation. The last choice, courtesy of Black Swan, is the glass belt Petravia, a massive belt of asteroids that was turned to glass by the Lord Ravager Zephyro. These days, it's apparently known to house one of the branches of the Morning Actors Troop. Ooh, so many options. I'm seeing stars already. Next up, everyone will select the destination that they wish to visit. And then, we'll put it to a vote. What I think... I'm guessing we would go... Giving like the trajectory story is going and what like parts have been set up so far. So far, big Esther is there. This can still change because it will be a long while until we actually will like get to the new planet. So, um, my guess so far we will ever either go to Edo Star just because of like sickness being gone and like having like more urgent like more urgency to it or maybe Melis Tannen because um <sighs> why did I forget his name again the Knights of Beauty and such have been set up um quite a lot Actually, with like that one story point in 1.5. Um, and then also him appearing randomly in Panicone, even though I don't think it was actually him. So there's also a lot of hints that be, uh, he might become like more relevant sooner or later. Um, other than an oceanic planet sounds nice, <laughs> not gonna lie. There's a chestnut of Petraria. Mm. 
I mean, it won't really matter what I say, but hey. Uh. What is it? Though the thing? fact that the distress signals have ceased means we're probably too late. But I still think we should investigate the situation there. Go on all the way again. Yes, I agree. As nameless, should we not extend a helping hand? You and Don Hung make good points. I'll throw in a vote for Edo Star, too. If that's the general sentiment, then we should indeed investigate. I vote for Edo Star, too. All votes for Edo Star. Looks like we have a winner. Next stop, Edo Star. Then this navigation meeting is adjourned. I'll go check the warp jump coordinates. Everyone can catch up on some rest in the meantime. When it's time to make the jump, Pom Pom will make an announcement. You won't get us so There's easily. still some time before the jump. What should I do? Well, I doubt <laughs> that we'll actually get us soon. How about a chat? Over here. <laughs> nope. Sure, let's chat with like. Uh, oh no. Dan Hang and March and everyone else, I guess. Come to think of it, <laughs> this trip to Panacone was the first time we trailblazed together, wasn't it? Yep, we did. And it was quite nice. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll have plenty of time to spend together on the Express. So there'll definitely be more chances for adventures like this. Turn in early today. You've really been pushing yourself hard recently. If you don't take this chance to recharge, it could lead to long-term problems. It seems fine when you're young, but it's a different story as you age. What does Bert have to say? <laughs> you're fast becoming an excellent trailblazer. It's an honor to be able to watch you grow. Don't downplay your achievements. Everyone has witnessed your growth. I've known many warriors in my time, and only a few achieved the kind of growth you have. Back home, where I'm from, you'd be rated at least an S tier. We are an S rank walkery! <laughs> and yes, he's referring literally to that. It's not been easy for you these past few days. You've earned some downtime. I'm looking forward to seeing how you'll perform on our next journey. Please let this trip be uneventful. Please let this trip be uneventful. Please let this trip be uneventful. Oh, it won't be. We're always running into trouble. Mumbling? I'm praying. <laughs> The last couple of trailblazing expeditions have been downright terrifying. It's about time we had some fun, cozy, and cute adventures for a change. Come on, start praying with me. Oh, please let this trip be uneventful. Please let this trip be uneventful. Please let this trip be uneventful. <laughs> it will only come more trouble. Huh. For some reason, I'm suddenly stricken by the feeling that we haven't crossed paths in quite some time. Well, true. Where is it, my heart? I, I, <laughs> I should have known better than to expect anything serious from you. <laughs> Come on. I was serious with that. <laughs> Got it. Hmm. This Astral Express sure is comfy, but I got one tiny problem with it. How come there ain't no potent drinks on this ride? Oh, come on, I can live without malt juice. At least stock something else. Uh, like that white gem. Calm in his dirt and not too pricey. Hmm. Oh, no, it us already. It's a 12 plus. Oh, well, 
That's, uh, different, kind of strong. Ha! <laughs> All these years out in the wild, and now I'm bunking in luxury. Gotta say, it's quite the treat. Okay. What does Black Swan have to say to us? Oh, you're here. Seeing your reflection among the stars in the porthole <laughs> really does seem somewhat surreal. How about it? This journey of beautiful dreams. Was it to your liking? Hmm. It was a roller coaster, right? Not gonna lie. There are a lot of loose ends. There's a rich scent of curiosity here. Such memories can be irresistibly captivating. So, how about you hand that small parting gift back to me? I'm quite eager to have it back. Peter Vista. Ah, sure. Hmm. Oh? Hmm, never mind. I just stumbled upon a particularly fascinating spot in your memory. Before I explain, I would like to apologize to you. This farewell gift I gave you isn't really a compass from the memory zone. But merely an empty light cone. Oh, come on. Also, what I'm just remembering. Did the sparkle had something planned for the Charmony Festival? It also haven't come into play yet. And I doubt it was wasted. So. Remember when we entered the hotel in the dreamscape for the first time? And I procured a few trinkets from your companions. Their functions are similar. This way, I can always be attuned to your location, ready to assist immediately if you encounter any threats. But this is not its most intrinsic function. Light cones are slices of light used to encapsulate solidified phenomena. This empty light cone is the same. It can etch your memories in their most vivid form. And then, allow me to admire and manipulate them, turning them into unique mementos. All the world is born from the power of mind and soul, and that power is memory. To prevent ourselves from being forgotten by the world, we must make the world remember us. Or use our memories to recreate it. Life, seemingly vast, offers but a scant collection of impactful memories. Some joyful, some sorrowful, some light, some heavy. But you are different. Memory is a reflection of the future. Within that reflection, I see your unparalleled worth. You have the power to craft memories that can captivate the world. Your memory can illuminate the universe's future path. And that memory will be as scintillating as the star clusters you see in this portal. Precisely. But do you know the deeper meaning behind it? Mm, the reason is know. simple. In this grandiose and ostentatious dream of the families, only you personally experienced the entire course. Is she indirectly involved for for breaking and also implicating and referencing the moments we saw out of other characters' POVs. 
because we as like the trailblazer weren't there for every scene but we as the net player definitely know all that happened so far hmm. she's doing um islander <laughs> she's pulling that patience my friend I will reveal the answer to you, but that time is not now. Turn around and take a look at your friends. Every one of them is reveling at the arrival of their next destination, all filled with hopes and expectations of their own present and future. Revealing everything at this moment would be a bit of a buzzkill. Wouldn't it? So she's a blow, she knows what's I'm going to happen. I'm looking for an opportune time. A time when you're totally at ease. Perhaps when the night grows hazy and you're about to drift off would be the most opportune. <laughs> Foreshadowing. How about All right. one fine night? I will prepare the candles, aromatics, and even a cushy couch to create a cozy dreamland for you. And then... I will tell you the answer in the form of a little bedtime story to lull you to sleep. And I saw them. Hi. Hello. Attention all passengers. The express is about to make the jump. Please be seated and hold on. Something's going to interrupt us. <laughs> it looks like we're finally about to set off. There are countless gleaming memories out there waiting for us. Why don't we just leave it at that? For Wait, now? I think I think it might actually be Sparkle which will hinder us. Ah, that's right. As a small token of compensation for playing that little trick on you with the empty light cone, I will gift you with some words. They hold great significance to me. Life is akin to a winding labyrinth where memories serve as our sole companions. <laughs> You'll remember these words dearly, won't you? She's saying something true, they're not gonna In lie. In the year 2158 of the Amber Era, the first year of the new epoch, the universe resumed its intended trajectory the kindling of conspiracy smoldered in Panacone, the land of the dreams. Failing to erupt into a blaze, it instead flickered briefly okay, into that's an detail. Anvil, before vanishing in the blink of an eye. She's literally saying the moment we started going the into this world. And those fated okay. to die remain in their eternal slumber. While the living find solace in deep sleep. All clamored in a cacophony of silence and then went about their own ways. The cosmos emanated a vitality characteristic of a new era. All for the modest price of a brother and sister's mild grief. Babies are born as stars extinguish. The silver rail unfolds. The story of the Astral Express comes to a close, yet it also embarks anew. Time marches forward, heralding the arrival of a new chapter in the history of trailblazing expeditions. Trying to go to the end of a dream is the end. She literally said with like the first year of a new epoch, this is literally the moment like we started, so to say. So why are we getting credits now? <laughs> um Yeah. <sighs> it was Jade. So she literally is like saying that we've been like at the start of like creating a new epoch. Which is interesting.
Countless shooting stars streak the sky tonight. If you can pick the right one, it will carry your wish to thousands of distant worlds. You're feeling very relaxed now, aren't you? So, then... It's time to tell you a little bedtime story. <laughs> well, let's start with a conclusion. The crew was defeated in the battle against Sunday. Everyone in Panacone failed, and no one survived. But don't panic. The truth, as horrifying as it may be, is not yet irreversible. There's still a glimmer of hope, and that's why I'm here. Next, I'll use this empty light comb that carries all your memories to relive everything that happened before. And when this story reaches its end, I'm sure someone as clever as you will notice that. There's a major flaw in the story you have experienced. Yet, within that flaw lies a glimmer of hope. She literally is pulling an eye chan. Like. <sighs> ah, okay. <laughs> Jesus. Mm hmm. God, it's fucked up. <laughs> Are you ready for it? Do you remember everything? When the clock turned back, the Express started a warp jump, sending you to a strange dream. You were bewildered back then, and then a galaxy ranger named Acheron showed you a way out. When you arrived at the Reverie Hotel, you met the doorman Misha and had a confrontation with a Venturine, an IPC representative. Thankfully, Acheron appeared again and helped you. After that, you saved Firefly and explored Penacone together. During the tour, you ran into Sparkle disguised as Sampo and accidentally entered a child's dream. There, I rescued both of you from death, but Firefly didn't return to reality. She realized the truth and tried to involve you in her plan, but that resulted in an accidental death. Even more unsettling, you soon encountered another murder. The two cases of death prompted you to investigate the truth behind the sweet dream. Despite your efforts to gather information about the two victims, you didn't make much progress. But you did learn about the Watchmaker from Gallagher. Meanwhile, Aventurine was secretly carrying out his scheme, in which you were one of the pawns. In the midst of a fierce battle, Acheron revealed her true identity as an emanator of the Nihility and unsheathed her sword. That strike foiled Aventurine's plan and opened a passage between the sweet dream and the original memory zone. Upon your arrival at Dreamflux Reef, you learned the truth that death was actually dormancy. As well as the truth about the dreamscape, the Stellaron, and the bellboy, Misha. You split up with Sunday and Robin, looking for a way to seal the Stellaron. However, it turned out that Sunday and the Dream Master had their own hidden agenda. And you had to engage in an ultimate duel on the stage of the Charmony Festival. Finally, the story reached its conclusion. You emerged victorious, with the Trailblaze triumphing over the Order, and Penacone embracing a bright and peaceful future. This marks the end of the thrilling journey in Panacone. I'm sure you've already noticed something unusual, haven't you? 
There's a lot of things unusual. First, Acheron. We still never got into um, her um, racist sentences where she was talking to us with like red underlined text. That's still a big thing. Second, Sparkle didn't have her impact yet. Sparkle has been set up so hard to have some major impact in the story and she didn't have her impact yet. Third, how is Arrange Reem back? <laughs> There's no explanation to that, literally. So something is really amiss here, right now. And also, where's Acheron? Where the hell is she? And even then, Sunday has been implying in the conversation with the Dream Master that the Dream Master is not the one controlling the Stellaron on Panic County. Also, in all of this ending, the Stellaron has never been mentioned what's going to happen with the Stellaron. Sixth point. What's with Firefly's fur theft? And what's with the fight she fought? This has never been make, made clear what she actually did there. And it was, in my opinion, totally random. And I'm not sure if there's like four more points I'm missing. Just, but those are like the six big points, which I'm like, why? Also, seven point. Um, I still forget his name. Uh, why the hell was the Knight of Beauty there? <laughs> Even though it wasn't him himself. Like, it probably wasn't him. So, there's a lot of things that don't mesh together well at the moment. The major flaw, which contradicts all the known information, hides in this story. Sparkle. Yes, Sparkle. The most enigmatic and elusive character in the entire story. But, unfortunately, she was the first to uncover the truth, and she did purposefully attack you to create confusion. By the way, she left me a message to pass on to you. Always make sure you can distinguish reality from imagination. <laughs> Is that a clue, you may wonder? I'm not sure, although I'm pretty sure that the fatal variable has nothing to do with that masked fool. Oh? I don't think it's Misha. Misha has been cleared up. Pictures of Firefly and Robin also are kind of clear. The other major point would be Ekron. Are you suggesting that the sleeping and shapeless never bestows its gaze upon anyone, and thus no one can truly possess the power of the nihility? That's a very astute guess. But unfortunately, Acheron did progress further down the path of the nihility. Her unwavering belief in liberating the world from the grasp of paths surpasses the capabilities of ordinary humans. I'll discard that incorrect answer for you. Take your time and think it through. What is the fatal variable? Okay, I'm getting lost. <sighs> Well, 
Although the fake deaths of those two ladies don't align with our initial assumptions. That's true, that's this why. This fact itself doesn't contradict the information we have so far. I'll go ahead and eliminate that incorrect answer for you. So, what is the fatal variable? Is it even among these uh, choices or not? It is true that Gallagher is a history fictionologist, but he didn't lie in this matter. In addition, death and dormancy do arise from the same concept, don't they? This is not the fatal variable in your adventure. Take your time and think it through. I don't think it's Misha either. How should he be it? Hmm. Little Misha. Or should I call him the Watchmaker? He's only a segment of memory in a dream bubble, but his ambition for the Trailblaze led him to leave the bubble and embark on a grand adventure in Penacony. Maybe it's Black Swan, Well, Misha so. is a rather special memory zone meme, and he was granted power by the trail plays. There's still one thing that he shouldn't be able to do. A life born in the memory zone could never manifest in reality. So, why did he appear in the Reverie Hotel in reality? Okay, yes. I didn't think about that. <laughs> That's totally true. This is kind of a really big floor there. Okay, it's, okay it is Misha. I totally forgot about that aspect now. The answer is simple. He is the one fatal variable that contradicts all our known information. This means that you, who wholeheartedly believe in this memory. It's also even weirder. It's a, no, it's also so mean because this is literally one of the first scenes when you arrive in Penacony where you are totally distracted by everything else that's going on. <laughs> Though, maybe one guess, since Barker is the one who knew the truth all along, maybe it was Barker who we actually saw there. Though it also would con yeah, it also would contradict with the information we know because Misha should only been should have only been seen by uh, people following the trailblaze. Are still trapped in the dreamscape at this very moment. Wake up, sleepyhead. Break free from this eternal dream and return to the real world. We'll find our answers there. The train is about to make the jump. Five, four, three, So the Pentecone story way, is far darling. from over. God. Not another one. Thank you so much, Black Swan. <laughs> Finally, I can breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> I understand you must be confused, and we'll do our best to shed light on the situation. However, before that, it's essential to know that... 
This place is the rift between dream and reality. A place reserved only for those who have awakened from Enna's dream. Enna's dream. Interesting. Do you remember Sunday's ambitious plan? He intended to harness the power of the Stellaron, the collective will of over 100,000 Oak family members, and the desires of everyone in Penacone to usurp the harmony and restore the order. Unfortunately, it didn't stop there. From the early days of our journey into Asdana, we were already affected by the Stellaron, that strange dreamscape where we met. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a sign that your thoughts were beginning to drift away. So they want to say that like ever since we first met Echoron, we've been stuck in like an dream. Curious. I don't think the goal of the order was to put everyone into a deep sleep. Quite the contrary. They used the Stellaron to catalyze the leakage of Astana's memoria into the material world, allowing the dreamscape to blend with reality. And that included a lot of memoria from the Beyond the Sky Choir. As time came and went, the dreams eventually became indistinguishable from reality, and reality became an illusion. People think they are awake, but their spirits have long since stepped into the Temple of Order. This is what makes Anna's dream so powerful. In this paradise governed by the Order, everyone indulges in their delightful dreams and lives happily ever after. I believe what you experienced in the sweet dream, except for that flaw, was real. Only in this way could you reach the destination, lifting the crisis in Penacone and embarking on your next trailblazing expedition. A return to Penacone. If Penicone. it wasn't for Acheron's plan, we might have been trapped in this dream forever. Fortunately, while the path of the Order governs all things, it can't affect the Nihility. I came to realize this when the Dream Master tried to expel me at any cost. This is also why you felt a sense of peculiarity when traveling with her. Well, I'm not as fortunate as she is. Even if I'm a memo keeper, I was still influenced by the power of the Order and fell into hallucinations. However, thanks to your memories, now we still have a chance to turn the tide. For mortals, even if they possess the great power of a path. They can't create a flawless world like gods do. That's why there was a flaw in your dream. In other words, once you have realized the world is not real, you'll have a chance to break free from the dream. The flaw in your dream lies within Misha, who could have never appeared in reality. When I turned the pages of your memories, I realized that I was in an illusion, too. Now Sunday has usurped the power of the Harmonious Choir through the Charmony Festival. Asdana has thus fallen into Anna's dream, transforming everyone equally into the notes of the Eon. Failure doesn't mean weakness. Only the strong can gather the will to resist the order and try to break free. We still have a chance, though. To make it happen. Please, Black Swan, guide us to those with a strong will. All right, please come with me. These people are... They're the ones who accept Enna's dream and indulge in their happy illusions. We have no means to wake them up now. Not even your clockwork will do the trick. However, there are still other things we can do. Let's keep going. Take your money, the person dives into the dreamscape, having not uh, the slightest reaction to your arrival. Ah, satisfied again. 
Back up to the paradise. This is the wrong way. <laughs> Stream four. Oh, wait a minute, not. Can I just teleport there? Hello, Robin. Here we are. It's Robin. Finally, you've arrived. Let me introduce you to Robin. She woke up from Anna's dream by her own will, and it's this tough lady who led us here with her song. I woke up for the same reason as all of you. In the dream, I experienced something that could never occur in reality. Are we going to lock it up in a cage? I want to see it fly freely in the sky. Without us, this bird would be too fragile to survive on its own. Do you want it to die? No, but... <sighs> then let's take care of it together until it can return to the sky. Uh, uh huh? Birds have wings because they're meant to fly. Even if they may crash on the ground one day, they shouldn't be trapped in a cage. <laughs> Birds belong to the sky, so we should help them return there, right? The hmm. illusion was so impossibly blissful that I realized it was just a dream. And this is our final hope. Anna's dream is founded upon the Harmonious Choir, namely everyone's shared wishes. It will only materialize once the aspirations of all beings in Penacony merge as one. At present, it has become impervious due to people's desire to remain slumbering within the dream. And in order to destroy it... Hey there. We must make everyone in Penacony want to wake up. This now way we are comes the to tricky do. part. How do we do it? Also, this is literally the um, finale of part one on the phone came back third. <laughs> this is literally breaking everyone up from the stream of the spiritual Adam. <sighs> Humans yearning for sweet illusions borders on obsession leading them to subconsciously resist the harsh reality. Therefore, I carefully selected a moment where he was completely unguarded, guiding him to uncover the truth himself to make him regain his consciousness. However, to wake up everyone in Panacone and get them to share the same determination, 
That would be nearly impossible. Indeed. I'm afraid it's almost as difficult as resurrecting an eon. But we can't just stay here and do nothing. Oh, then I am Buta. This is a critical moment for the whole universe. Who cares about some dumb number? <laughs> Thanks to Black Swan. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And thanks to the Memo Keepers and Penaconi, too. I believe your partners have also awakened from their dreams. This is the first step of our plan. With the assistance from the Garden of Recollection, those who possess a strong will, like you, will gradually awaken from the dream. These free wills are the discord that will sway Anna's dream. It's over, they will. However, awakening a mere handful of individuals is insignificant compared to the vast number of people immersed in the dream. We must find other ways to awaken the free will of millions of people within a short period of time. If breaking through from the inside proves challenging, we can seek assistance from the outside. We've long been aware of a potential solution. As Donna is a galaxy known for its abundant memoria and the remarkable phenomenon known as Synesthesia Dreamscape. When people first enter this place, they often find themselves and others sharing a collective dream. At this very moment, there is only one dream encompassing the entire Asdana system. So, you mean, if we can attract a large number of outsiders to this system, their free will would intertwine with this dream and shake it to its core? Is the However, answer. those outsiders might also succumb to the dream and become the foundation of the Order instead. The real challenge is, how can we gather a huge number of people as determined as you within a short period of time? <sighs> Looks like the JDAP kiss of allying oath will be the only solution. No. No need for that. Keep your wants in a lifetime treasure. We don't need to bother the Sienjo Alliance for such a tiny request. You, you want thousands of people with unwavering free will? <laughs> That's easy. Oh, is it now? Just leave it to us, Galaxy Rangers. You can gather Galaxy Rangers? <laughs> Outsiders may see Galaxy Rangers as elusive and disconnected individuals, and actually, they're right. And that's why we have a tacit understanding among us. Do you know what it is, Acheron? It's the relic I returned to you. Exactly. Its owner must have told you that it's meaningless to anyone other than a Galaxy Ranger. And that it can only fulfill its purpose when returned to its rightful owner. Because it's a burial artifact. Worthy only of a hero who has served the Galaxy Rangers with honor. When its light illuminates the universe, it means the fall of a hero. And in the direction it falls, countless meteors will streak across the sky. Those meteors are Galaxy Rangers coming from all corners of the cosmos, driven by a shared purpose, without questioning the cause or counting the cost, because we abide by a common principle. The shooting stars of the hunt only descend on the longest night, and with them comes the dawn. We've stayed silent for far too long. Now, it's time to remind all the cowards Oppressors and villains of the universe of our presence. I'll be the one to ignite the first spark. Once the dreamscape is swayed, I'll complete the second step. I'll fine-tune the slumbering souls with the Song of the Harmony, interrupting them with the discord of Trailblaze, and guiding them towards reality. It's true that some people are born strong, and others are born weak. 
If the Trailblaze is the target of heroes, then the Harmony will guarantee that the strong help the weak. Only the people of Penacony themselves can be the saviors of their homeland. Their path of happiness should be forged by themselves. While I may not be a nameless, but I'm willing to instill courage in all those who need it. It's kind of quite curious. This includes my brother as well. Lena's dream is too cruel for him and everyone else. Your plan sounds well conceived, but still, it appears somewhat idealistic and romantic. The flaws rooted in human nature can't be eradicated overnight. Do you believe these efforts alone are enough to convince everyone to choose the right path? I agree with you, Black Swan. That's why the most critical aspect of this plan is not to convince everyone to choose the right path, but to inspire them to save themselves. True. <laughs> so, you're the key in the end, I assume? The Harmonious Choir possesses the power of an emanator. To overcome it, you'll need the same level of power. The final step in destroying the sweet dream will be my responsibility. That's a relief to hear. <sighs> now that our roles are assigned, let's get to our battlefield and pose a grand finale. May I have a moment alone with you? There's one more thing I need to explain to you. This grand festival is drawing to its close. This is the starting point for the ultimate stage of our journey. Just as it marked the beginning of all the stories in Penacony. Indeed, she was the first to discover the world beyond the shores of death, and shared this truth with all of us. There's something you should know. We were able to locate you within this boundless dream, and find the key to breaking free from the dream. All because of one person's unwavering dedication. Firefly. She awakened from the dream ahead of others discovered the Express amidst the stars, and brought us valuable information about the remnants of the Order. She may have been aided by the script, and it came at a cost. As you know, Firefly is a stowaway who entered the Dreamscape in a different way from ours. Without the Dream Pool in the hotel or assistance from the family, she can only awaken from this dream in one way. A real death. We mustn't fail her determination. I'm not implying that we must win this fight no matter what, but our resolve should match that of that courageous lady. Are you ready? All right. Let's embark on the final stage once and for all. Very well. Now. Please close your eyes. She must could. I'm gonna take the story one because uh, I have another, another build yet. Hmm. <laughs> so it's you. Our time spent with one another is precious.
Did you check out my latest live stream? It was a showstopper. Let's see if this this works. Oh. How long has this rain been ongoing? My current backstory. If I remember correctly, it has lasted for decades, or even centuries. The unwavering determination of the hunt followers persists even in death. But thankfully, we've guided those lost souls to their lives beyond. They were heroes in their time. And they won't be reduced to puppets of the nihility in their death. In this detail, the last time we saw this shot, his hands were quite more spread out. Now they are all like right underneath the black pot. You see, the shadows on the sea have vanished. Do you remember? He once said that the sky would clear when the regrets of the departed had faded away. But it's still raining. I know. So. Why is all this? Why did this rain choose me? Because someone's regrets haven't been fulfilled, perhaps. Mortals who walk the paths are like sailors on a vast ocean, leaving behind a trail that creates countless ripples of possibilities. These ripples last longer than the fleeting lifetimes of humans. And for some, their presence leaves such a strong mark that it's reflected in the waves. Sin thirsters. The obsessions of the path striders. They emerge from the depths of Ix, seeing themselves as masters of their own destiny, unknowingly repeating the actions of their past lives. They emerge from the nihility and head toward it, leading purposeless lives. However, these hollow phantoms, they have journeyed with me for such a long time. Oh. So this is how it is. I'm already dead. Interesting. Yes. Cut. This looks really cool, though. Are you watching over me? This is my duty. As Acheron the Watcher. After Acheron. I'm remember. guarding the path to the abyss of the Nihility. Guiding every soul reluctant to become one with it. Back to this side. But if this is what the departed ones expected, should you try to change it? I don't know. But someone once told me that when the inevitable moment came, he hoped that someone would stand at his grave and place a bouquet of flowers. Even if it doesn't make sense at all. Some tasks have to be done, even if they are pointless. I have experienced that much already. She's a rude returning the words to him he told her. <laughs> Please extend your hand and then close your eyes. I'll carry your wish with me and fulfill it. Only then will I be able to put an end to the final regret by the Dead Sea. Will I ever see them again? Yes, that is certain. Because it was you who told me about the Express 
your two former companions. The expedition cut short by the swarm. Your narrow escape from death. And your encounter with the Galaxy Rangers. Is there really one of the nameless? Come on. And Penicone. The hometown to which you could never return. Yeah. For countless times, I got rejected by the family and had to pass it by. He is really the watchmaker. <laughs> oh, come on. But I knew that my companion was still there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. He's here now, not Are Mikhail. You still there? But still. Take my hand and come with me. We will leave this place. You'll embark on a long, long journey, shrouded in darkness. But fear not. As a touch of red will be awaiting you at the end of the path. That's the color of existence. Follow it, and it'll guide you and illuminate the way out. By doing so, you'll eventually reunite in the warmth of the sunlight. Thank you. May death be the end of your boundless dream. Guiding you back to the waking world. Welcome to the horizon of existence. This place is one of the thousands of manifestations belonging to the sleeping and shapeless. And it's also an exit out of the nihility for the awake ones. Is this literally the same place Rancher Reen went to? Let's bid our final farewells here. Interesting. Always distinguish between reality and imagination. Alright, Grey. Life is akin to a winding labyrinth. Where memories serve as our sole companions. May your schemes be for us. Anna's dream is too cruel for him and everyone else. To the imperfect tomorrow. I still remember the question on the invitation letter. Why does life slumber? Why does life slumber? We don't know the answer yet. But we're about to awaken from this dream. Or perhaps such is the answer itself. Leave this place. Return to where you belong. And awaken Panacone from this dream. As I said, our plan is not about convincing everyone to choose the right path, but about inspiring them to save themselves. So, when will people actively save themselves? In the angry the answer danger. is when they are in desperate situations, mm -hmm. like a drowning individual in the deep sea. When one's body and mind bear immense pressure agony, confusion, and despair will follow. I firmly believe that. This is such a cruel way to go at it, but... Uh, yeah. The fragility of humankind often freezes them in their tracks. But in truly desperate situations, they will strive to save themselves. And now, 
Panacone has enough heroes to lead them forward. It's through this inherent, self-centered instinct that people exert their utmost effort, even when they know their struggle is fruitless. As absurd as it may seem, it's their resistance. As for now, it is time to guide them, not as a savior, but as a nameless among those mortals. In this way, you will reunite in the warmth of the sunlight. The game has really good voice acting, not gonna lie, I agree with that. The rain is intensifying. Before we part ways, please allow me to ask a few final questions. I like this reverence. This literally is a music theme out of Honkai Impact Bird. Ah, these references, these subtle hidden references, I love them. So far, you have forged unbreakable bonds with numerous individuals and entities in the sweet dream. Might I ask if you fear severing these bonds with your own hands? If there is a vast, lifelike dreamland that is virtually indistinguishable from reality, a realm without death, where everyone can attain the happiness and fulfillment they deserve, living blissfully ever after. And she's literally referencing um, the finale of part one of Honkai McFord again. Again, referring to the spiritual Adam. This is so cool because Welt even early, like mentioned um, the spiritual Adam by name in the Pentecone, like. Uh, story quest when he like had his, style, uh, his conversation with Agaron. I would ask, would you wish to stay? She's like literally asking to say this as the same questions about the same choices she had to do in Honkai Bigford. <laughs> I'm so deep in the lore of this game by now it's like I understand the subtle references imagine if this splendid dream were fated to fall apart friends family strangers followed by the gentle breeze soaring birds the stars and ultimately, yourself. Everyone, and every face they remember. The joy and the heartaches. The vows sealed and those left hanging. All will inevitably march towards a predetermined ending. If you had grasped the journey's finale right from its inception, I would ask, would you still embark on this journey? Hell yes, we would. Hell yes. I'm glad. The answer itself doesn't matter. What matters is that you've made a decision. Listen, touch, and ponder. And therein lies the sensation. Cherish it, because that's what makes us exist. Such is the only answer humans can offer when facing the Nihility. If the Nihility represents the primal fear of life, rendering any lofty convictions insignificant under their imposing shadow, then behind this shadow, there must exist the most fervent source of light in the world. Just as every life that edges closer to death fervently approaches the end of the Nihility, 
We must pursue that primordial light. You exist in the nihility. And you watch over others to depart it. Such a task is absurd and meaningless. <laughs> Nevertheless, someone had to do it. As for the meaning you mentioned, even if it's a meaningless task, I've come this far, haven't I? Even if the future be forged, may not even belong to you. It may not belong to me, but it definitely belongs to someone. What uh, hardships you must have experienced. Not gonna lie, I love what they did with Ekron's character. I love it so much. <laughs> In that case, allow me to do something meaningless too. Please, tell me your name. Perhaps my existence will vanish in the next moment and nobody will remember. This conversation or your answer. But I believe that your name should be remembered. And this universe will remember it as well. For me. Some things are difficult to recall, yet there are others that I find challenging to forget. Such is memory, a creation of the past that blossoms into significance in the distant future. I remember that marks the start of my journey, the origin of the vibrant red hue in my life and the most fervent element amidst every tempest. That's my name. Raiden Ozen Mori. May. Finally! She is Raiden May after all. The golden dream is getting restless. In the coming long nights, I'm afraid you will face many setbacks and witness many tragedies. And in the end, you will only see in black and white. But please believe me that in that monochrome world, there will be a glimpse of fleeting red. And when you make a choice, it will appear once more. What you must do is ponder its significance, then return to the waking world. That's where we all find our answers. Let's actually have a proper boss fight.
I weep for the departed. It did so far. We just three faces. Come on. Just seeing it now. I hope it wasn't a bad idea to not go in without a heal. It's on me. Eventually, we have to carry with damage mitigation. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Disorderly noise. Destined for oblivion. Don't throw the game. Mm, not quite a god. No dirt. Watch your head. Disorderly noise. Let's play our own melody. Let the show begin. Spend freely. Free will, or was it the waters of oblivion? <laughs> Enjoy eternal peace. No dirty tricks, all right. Oh, he doesn't have like anything bad for the other faces. I feel like I should, should have put a healer in. Damage. Music. Robin. There seems to be another kind of sound coming into the Order Symphony. Panacone's first and last disharmony. with me of course it didn't hear uh, uh, hear her those imprisoned in their dreams are awakening for freedom the disorderly noise <laughs> I like trains is that you singing you have heard their cry this is not the paradise they hoped for even so they don't know where they should be heading that's why I had to become the lone star in the sky to guide them. Even if that star must hang in a perpetual night of solitude.
Um, Let's I'm play sure our own melody. melody. What the show begin? The dice have been cast. Kind of. The universal looked a bit more epic, not gonna lie. <laughs> Bust? <laughs> or maybe I'll take it off. Disorderly noise. Another journey begins. Still waters noise. <laughs> Uphold the truth, and you will. <laughs> it's on me. The noise is fading. Watch your head. Enjoy eternal peace. Free will, or was it fate? Destiny or oblivion? Disorderly noise. I'll take the lead. I expected eventually we to give him more shields. Not gonna lie. No dirty tricks. Part of the melody. Oh. Wait for good tidings. Still the same the dice one. have been bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. <laughs> I don't think I'm for this part. This is a to come back to die, but hey. Still water the flip. Let the show begin. Keep up with me. Spin freely. Still the same. Watch your head. Disorderly noise. I'll take the lead. He is shielding so much. What the hell? Destiny for oblivion. No dirty tricks. The noise is fading. Oh. Sink into a dream. Huh? No noisy. <laughs> yeah, I can survive this. The dice have been cast. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. Let's play our own we have to use a completely different setup for this. Still the same. Have you broken free from the dream of order? I can't restart without changing. Mm. We've done enough sleeping already. Let's show them a wake-up call. How annoying is that, please? Um. Uh, and I can't, I can't, it totally can't change my party. This is so annoying. Could complete the yes. Uh. Are you ready? Very well. Hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking what would be good.
I don't think Lurcha can solo heal it. That's my problem. Jingle would, would would be a good DPS for this. Would you prefer me to reveal or uh, conceal, General? With you on our side, we're destined for victory. <sighs> Huh. Welcome. I know to skip for all of this. Uh. Always distinguish between reality and life is akin to a winding labyrinth. May your schemes be for a Anna's dream is too to the imperfect tomorrow. I still remember the question on the invitation letter. Why does life slump? Mm. The rain. Not all of that already. Good. I gotta fight. Have you broken free from the dream of order? We've done enough speaking already. Let's show them a wake up call. No matter. You chose the wrong. <laughs> Follow my charge. Comfort is ridiculous. Noisy. Order. Without order, how can the weak be righteous? Listen up. Ultra damage mitigation, top notch. <laughs> I already take so much less damage. This is ridiculous. Uh, it's just annoying that I can't see her fear that well from that angle. Here. This thunder now noisy. Show no mercy. This orderly noise. Wake up! Let's play our... Let the show begin! Now, sink into a dream. I'll see you off. <laughs> uh, noisy. The dead return! Together as one! All things of human creations. Listen up. A foregone conclusion. Conflict is pitiless. Disorderly noise. Is that it? No matter. I don't even need uh watchers here yet. Which 
Up there, but... creations. Receive divinity. Reciprocity. Repay. Excellent. A quick divination. Converge and awaken. The dead return! Go down. Enjoy eternal peace. I see through you. There's no time to lose. Come on. It's ridiculous. Take the lead. Wake up! Here is thunder. Here. All things are part of the melody. Yin and Yang. The dreamscape is indistinguishable from reality. It is still be called an illusion. All things human. Hey there, my hero. Welcome to chat. Listen up. Let's play our. Let the show begin. It is perfect melody I command. We create paradise anew. Going good. There seems to be another kind of sound coming into the Order Symphony. Panacone's first and last disharmony. Those imprisoned in their dreams are awakening for freedom. night of solitude um, let's play our own melody sort of like this let the show begin eternal sleep the dead return all 
things in the human creations. <laughs> Show no mercy. Wake up. A foregone conclusion. Here, this thunder. Together as one. <laughs> I'll take the lead. Noise. Listen up. A quick divination. Follow my charm. Conflict is pitiless. Even if the future Luna, don't uh, at once against him right now. Sweet. This is going so much better than the first try. Keep up with me. Wake up. No matter. <laughs> I'll take the lead. Listen up. I'll see you off. Let's play our. Let the show begin. Noisy. The dead return. There's no time to lose. Here, this thunder. Noisy. Show no mercy. Noise is fading. Eternal prayer. I see through you. Converge and awake. Get human creations. Uh, <laughs> taking so many hits, though. You chose the wrong enemy. Witness the will of the weak. If we had never experienced solitude. How could we have embarked on different paths? Now, our final talk has concluded. The music is really nice, though. Not gonna lie. All the work of creation has been completed. The inevitable day has arrived. The embryo of philosophy will reshape for us all of reality. If your paradise can save more people, sever my path with your hands. Follow my charge. I already know about a collective shields. Conflict is pitiless. Oh, oh. May I honor. That's a lot of damage. Jesus. Gather as one. By the solemn desire. The weakness of humanity cannot be redeemed by others. You chose the wrong enemy. <laughs> Insolent. Eternal step. Dead return. Insolent. It's just funny how I've almost hit everything of it back again. Follow my chart. This party is working so much better than the one I had before. Show no mercy. I swear It came together. All things in the human creations. Oh, blasphemous. Listen up. 
There's no time to lose. Here, it's thunder. A quick divination. I'll take the lead. Have a noble soul. Don't be shackled by the past. Blasphemous. Wake up. Do you have to do a second type of breaking is? I see through you. Converge and awaken. I swear on the calendar. Keep up with me. Listen up. Let's play our. Let the show begin. I, I like how big the collective shield is I got on me right now, though. I swear on the I swear I'll take the lead. Wake up. How insolent. Here is thunder. How insolent. How insolent. I'll see you off. Eternal sleep. The dead return. See how much damage it does this time around. Keep up with me. Okay. Time for the no mercy. How insolent. Listen up. All things in the human creations. Is is not wake up. I see through. Finally. <laughs> and then it is Monday. <laughs> nice to cheat your name. So. Why does life slumber? Because. Someday. We will wake from our dreams. In the first year of the AE-2158, a fiery conspiracy erupted in the land of the dreams that soon faded in chaos and destruction. Whispers carried the tale of those fateful 48 system hours when a sun teetered on the precipice of collapse. A paradise stood on the brink of destruction, and a world was poised to surrender to its new master. Amidst it all, a body decayed, a pack of vultures gathered, and a brother and sister were doomed for eternal separation. And so, an eon succumbed to slumber once more. Some celebrated this fall, while others mourned. Among the insignificant witnesses, mere specks in the vast tapestry of the universe. It was said that this time, the Eon met their demise with dignity. As the cosmos bathed in the radiance of a pure dawn, a tempestuous storm brewed on the horizon. The chant of everything for the Amber Lord grew ever louder. Yet, no matter how one contemplates it, time inexorably swings Klopat's colossal hammer in eternal cycles. 
The tale of the Astral Express reaches both its conclusion and a new beginning. Time marches forward, heralding the arrival of a new chapter in the history of trailblazing expeditions. I'm trying to remember if we know this wise. Brother, do you think the stars will fade away? Where did that come all of a sudden? Because the constellation that looks like a bird, the torrent eagles, looks a bit dim lately. <laughs> it's the torment eagles. Don't worry, it's still there. It's just it's located in the inner ring of Penacony and can only be seen when spring and summer overlap. As for the question you asked, I think stars do die, just like people. But do you know, sister? No star actually belongs to the present. The light we see from them is from a long time ago. Even after the stars perish, their light will travel millions of light years, spanning countless years, to illuminate the night sky of another world. In our paradise, I believe there will be a star like that, shining with the same light. Its radiance will last forever, and its name will be happiness. No, not just one star. We should have two stars, or maybe even more. Yeah, you're right. It's a deal. It's a deal, then. This is our promise, and nothing will sway our ideals. Yeah, you bet. This is a proper end. <laughs> Are they gonna, gonna pull the same prank twice? Uh... God, so fucking late. <laughs> Script Supervisor Elio. Ah, uh, come on. An ex survivor of water is when the youngest girl bring. What the fuck? The system. Independence of Fighters. No more does we escape. It's a trend. Ah, there's like this description for each of the nameless. <sighs> Alright. For like what they've did. Uh, for what they've did, for what they've done. Gilbert, Shasura, Strike, Safe, Lazaria. Okay. I was a bit surprised that they've like so long uh, extra bullet points for each of the <laughs> nameless, but hey. Just to poke fun at me? No. I'm just impressed. Not only did you venture alone into Penacony and discover the truth of Dreamflux Reef, but you also managed to escape with the help of that Knight of Beauty. Mm. 
Why? How? When? <laughs> what happened on the adventure reset? Oh, come on. It's so confusing still. However, this came at a high cost. Losing a cornerstone is a hefty price to pay. Diamond just called a meeting to discuss what to do with you. Just as I expected. So is Diamond planning to demote me or kick me out of the Ten Stone Hearts? <laughs> Why don't you take a wild guess? Well, all right. And I'll guess. He's going to promote me to P46. All right. What will you wager? Are we talking about a real bet here? I don't want to wager anything just to escape your clutches. Like really. Was the was the Archendi we saw during the contest the real Archendi? And why was he there? And how the fuck did he help Rancherine? <laughs> how the fuck? Uh, okay, Archendi is somehow the weirdest character to me. Not gonna lie. But if it's just a friendly bet. I'll put on the line what I did when we first met. I'll bet my life, ma'am. Interesting. But since it's Diamond's call, no one can predict the outcome. I'm on my way to Pentagoni. Once everyone is settled, we'll return to Pier Point for the final showdown. Sounds like I'll be out of the action for a while. Finally, a chance to kick back. And relax. Yeah, leave everything to me and Topaz, child. Thanks to you, as soon as the Jade Stone was delivered to the family's compound, we finished up our preparations. The seeds we planted have taken root. Soon, it'll be time to reap the rewards. Huh? Let's wrap it up for now. Looks like I've got a visitor here. Oh, so many surprises today. Didn't expect a Galaxy Ranger and wanted criminal to show up here. Interesting. One who managed to take out two IPC members under the noses of our fleet. Do you understand what that means? Screw Wubba Boo, I just put him to sleep. <laughs> Don't try to intimidate me with that nonsense. Besides, I've taken down more IPC lackeys than the residual value you squeezed. And I don't mind adding a few more zeros to my wanted poster. I have a question for you. Be honest, or I don't mind putting a bullet into your head. Tell me, where is Oswaldo Snyder? Huh. Where's Oswaldo Snyder? Finally, we are done with the story. God, this took so long, not gonna lie. <sighs> And also, I won't really look at any much uh, anything else, really, because I will end the stream here. <laughs> because it's way too late for me, to be honest. I didn't plan to stream for this long, but I just wanted to wrap up the story, if, uh, like, at least for now. Uh, let's just give you your idol on. Unknown to each other, yet united in purpose. We make the same choices. 
Better missions, messages, and such. We will check those next time around. God. Let's look for someone to raid. Uh, yeah. Just a like word loot is on again, so why not? Let's search her. She's playing Genjin. So, not too far off. Okay. If this, for now, the Pentacony story is wrapped up. At least with the main part about all of this order and harmony business. The IPC still seems to be planning something. We'll figure it out in the next update. I hope you enjoyed watching along. I really like the ending they made in like this uh, bit of a like a bait and switch with the ending, but I. But yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope oh, we'll see you again next time. Be over there nice. Uh, be nice over there in the raid. That's what I wanted to say. We also leave some support. And we'll see each other next time. And then, bye bye.